Good evening and welcome to your Friday night fling here at the Modus Super Series where the final three spots at tomorrow evening's Champions Night will be confirmed. Jim McEwen was the first man to secure his spot at the £20,000 occasion on Wednesday and earlier on this morning we guaranteed two more names into the finals. Here is the best of the afternoon session. John Henderson had a wild two weeks here at the Super Series. He did finish with this 1-2-1 finish, but a lot of darts reasons he just came to cost Hendo in the end. As for Martin Adams, he showed glimpses of brilliance. He had 111 average yesterday, but just ran out of steam towards the end, although he did provide this 1-4-1 against Scott Walters. Jester Smith was in the race for a top two place right up until the very end. He will be disappointed not to qualify for Saturday night's final, but did show glimpses in the middle of the week of his brilliance. As for Colin Osborne, he was mightily unlucky not to win through. He was in a winner-takes-all game with Scott Walters. He came out the other side of it. As for Matt Clark, he finished second in the group. His 140 finish against Martin Adams in the nutritional battle. He found himself second, but he was the first man to qualify through. But Scott Walters was the top tungsten tosser in Group C, getting over the line 4-0 in that battle with Osborne to secure his place into tomorrow night's final. Alongside me up here on the balcony to reflect on that and to look forward to a brilliant night's worth of tungsten action is the asset himself, Paul Nichols. Let's begin by reflecting on what we saw this afternoon. It was drama right up until the very death. It went down to a last game decider in game 14 between Colin Osborne and Scott Walters. It was a fascinating conversation that myself and Glenn had with the room because we respectfully asked them, do you want to know what the, uh, what the, the, the permutations are going into the last round? And everybody just turned to us at once in sync and said, yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked to Matt Clark first and said, you're safe. And he showed no emotion whatsoever. But then we looked to Scott Walters and to Colin Osborne and we said, you guys are in a shootout. And unfortunately, we had to tell Justin Smith that he couldn't actually get to Saturday night anymore. And he was, he was quite disappointed. Let's have a look then at the final standings in Group C, following 10 games for all of the players. Scott Walters, the victor in the end on 14 points. Matt Clark, the other player to make his way through. Scott Walters, who this week's hit maximum of fun. Matt Clark has perhaps been the most clinical finisher of the lot. Yeah, Matt's shown a good level this week. I don't think we've waxed lyrical enough about some of the good games that he's played. I think we'll have to talk about that tomorrow but obviously the maximum prowess of Scott Walters will dominate. I don't think uh, we can talk enough about 30 maximums over the course of 10 games. Averaging three per match over that group is astonishing. It can't be forgotten, but the way he was able to dispatch Colin Osborne in that final game by four legs to nil with a really impressive performance just goes to show where his game is at right now. And Matt Clark is a story of where the Super Series has come recently because Matt Clark, a player who's made the quarterfinals of the world match play, has been in many a world championship, yet if he wins tomorrow night, will pick up his biggest ever check in darts. By quite some distance as well. When he made that quarterfinal back in 08 uh, at the world match play, it was £12,000, which is a lot of money back then. But Matt's had a nice career without having anything spectacular in it. I think he would probably admit that winning tomorrow would be the biggest thing he's ever done. He has won titles mm -hmm. in the BDO before, but ultimately you grade yourself by what you're doing now, and a win here would be huge for him. Well, that is Group C complete. We're going to finish off Group B in the evening session this evening. Let's have a look at the table then at the halfway stage of proceedings because it is Raymond Smith and Alexander Merckx who won three out of their four games yesterday. They're at the top on six points. And then just below, you've got Adam Mould on four. And then Kelling and Johnny Haynes on two points. Perhaps a surprise to see Johnny Haynes at the bottom of that table. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise, I would say. But I think uh, when you consider that he's only four points behind the top two, if you can get a good start in your first couple of rounds tonight, you can erase a lot of that damage. When you think about this group seven days ago, we had Sean Griffiths on eight points and didn't qualify. Mm -hmm. So by that token, the people on two are probably looking at winning at least three games tonight and improving that leg difference. I think it could be tight for that third spot tonight. Let's see what the bookmakers make of proceedings. And this is the outright group betting. 
and perhaps no surprise that the man at the top of your screen, Raymond Smith, is a heavy favourite. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that he's probably going to get in the, in the top three, but I think he's got one thing on his mind, which is uh, getting the top spot. But ultimately, when you look at Jamie Kelling at 33-1 to one to uh, come through this group as the outright winner, it, it is a big one, but I think more than anything else, he just wants to get through. Whether it's first, second or third, these guys really don't care. Mm -hmm. They just want to be in the draw for tomorrow. Well, let's have a look and see what your commentary colleague, Glenn Dowen, has made of Bettines, it seems. These are Duzzer's tips. It's a just under 10 to 1 treble. It begins with Johnny Haynes against Raymond Smith. There's a handicap there for Raymond Smith. And then a most 180s mark of Alexander Merckx and a total legs one. Anything there? Take your fancy out what Duzzer's picked. Well, Raymond hasn't been massive on the 180s this week. I think that's one of the reasons why Glenn has picked that one. So for Merckx to have the most 180s in that match at 11 to 5, that's quite attractive. So that one sticks out for me uh, as for Johnny Haynes versus Adam Mole total legs uh, over 5.5 so that one is 4-2 or a 4-3 in any way I think that's pretty inviting because I think we are going to have some close matches tonight ready to go yeah, why not? I'm getting excited about tomorrow, but I've, uh, we've got to go through this first. Exactly. This is the appetizer before the main course. It's the final session of darts before we're suited and booted for Champions Night tomorrow evening. But what an hors d'oeuvre we've got for you here. We've got Australia's number one. We've got some of the ADC's finest players. It's going to be some Friday night here at the Arrows, so let's get the action underway. It's Raymond Smith up against Jamie Kenning to start. This man's going to race his way down to the Coventry Bolts to join Glenn Dunn. Evening, Glenn. Hello, Henry. Great job there, guys. Fantastic analysis. What you see the guy in your picture there is top draw, the real deal. Raymond Smith came from Australia last Sunday. He's on a flight back next Sunday, so it's a real gamble for him, but a gamble worth going because we're now talking about the biggest prize money in amateur dart right now. 20 grand on top of the five grand for winning your league as well. 25,000 pound, and that is big bucks. Jamie Kellen, I thought, was actually very good yesterday. He just didn't get the rub of the green at times, and I quite liked everything about him. He didn't first let leg, it it's Raymond's get the better first. of him. And Game it was just on. a couple of doubles here and there, and it could have been a very different story for Jamie Kellen. Didn't really want to bother him tonight, but I would have been quite motivational to him in the sense that I would have focused an awful lot on the positives. Um, but already, Raymond Smith was concerned, sort of, from... Certainly from myself in the comedy box that we've over-egged the pudding about Raymond Smith this week because he's... Uh, 100. Just because me and Paul rate him so much and uh, you know he hasn't really delivered. But the most important thing, I guess, all that, he's not in the final yet tomorrow night. And that was a startling statistic from Paul to say that Sean Griffiths, this point last 100. week, was on eight points and didn't qualify. If Raymond Smith needed a wake-up call, then that would be it. One thing that's definitely going for Raymond, though, is that he has the best leg difference. 140. When it comes to these tight league positions in the middle, like Fallon Sherrick seven days ago and Sean Griffiths, towards the end, she just needed to win, and she did it handsomely. 91. But let's face it, Raymond is in a very strong position, and I suppose the one person who's in the most precarious position is... This guy, but he does have a better leg difference than Johnny Haynes right starting tonight, so that's 170. the positive. Yeah, we talked this morning about Martin Adams or John Henderson coming through the pack. It's not easy, obviously, when certainly in Champions Week, because you're up against real top-notch players. It's not like there's a one or two weak links so you can sort Jamie of focus Rikai, on. Jamie 161. Jamie's going to do it. He's going to have to do it the hard way. He's speaking the hard way. 161 is a real toughie to get. We need to treble here. 85. 76 finish. Raymond to require 110. Kind of finish that we like. But for Raymond Smith, 110 has been meat and drink for him when he's at his best. It's the old down under shot. 19 for 51 and tops. It's one thing I learned a lot when I moved Jamie out of Australia that they 76. use the 19s and 17s more than your average dart player. Kelling. Can he get a first leg break of throw on double eight? Game shot on the first That's a great leg. start Jamie for Jamie. Kellen. He'll be buoyed by that. And just watch out for those stretches tonight for Raymond, who has had leg, it's a somewhat to tumultuous week, travelling all the way here from Australia, straight into Group A, finishing second, and now has to do a job tonight to be part of 
Naughty. The swan song of Super Series 2 before he flies home on Sunday. Yeah, we haven't really found out what time his flight is on Sunday, but if it's an early one, I wonder if you realise if he does make Saturday night, and I emphasise the word if, because Jamie 100. Kellen just came out the traps like a top-class whippet. And exactly what he needed, like I was saying just before you got in the comms box there, Paul, that there was actually a lot of positives there for J Jamie Kellen yesterday. Just a couple of doubles here and there. Certainly a couple of tight finishes that could have gone either way for him, but he didn't look too dejected, and that's definitely one of his strong attributes. And he's focused on the positive tonight and 100. clearly realise he's up against one of the best players, if not the best player, in the Motor Super Series finals week. But he's up for the challenge and looking great. It's looking good tonight. These players love a bit of urgency. I think they all know it's knockout style darts tonight. We're not quite at knockout point yet, but they all understand that this is the last chance saloon to punch your ticket Jamie to a night 121. that will be different to any other in the whole series. Kelling could indeed extend his lead. 81. And that was the double that cost him last night. He leaves it a lot. But yesterday he had real problems on it. Just when you begin to think you've worked out this game. I did have Raymond Smith for a big, big favourite because each time I've seen him, he's come out the traps very, very nicely. He started well. But, uh, 122. Jamie requires 40. Jamie Kellen, whose strength is the outer Game ring. Shot on the second line. strength Jamie is double Kellen. top. Demonstrated in that one shot there from Jamie. This is a wonderful start from the young... Third leg, it's Raymond to throw first. And it would be bringing people here this Saturday night, he said. It would be the biggest occasion. And I asked him, would it be the biggest thing you've ever won in darts? And he went, Glenn, winning the weekly event in the Motor Suit. It was the biggest thing. He said, by a long 60. shot, this would change his darting perspective. He's a very strong player around Southern Wiltshire and all over Hampshire. Plays... Local tournaments with some very good talents and mixes it with some of the best. And he's another one of those players who doesn't want to go to County this weekend in Staffordshire. Just like a certain someone who qualified today in Scott Walters. 60. Staffordshire are rubbing their hands today because Hampshire are one down. They might be two down by the end of the night. And the way this is going so far... We'll get three to one to win it overall for uh, Raymond Smith. And I thought that was really generous odds, but clearly that's because he's not there. I think the Fancy bias one. maybe sometimes for myself is that he's already here on Saturday night, but Jamie Kellen's putting that to the sword right now. He hasn't given Raymond a shot at a double yet. 93. Or should I say from the other side of the coin, Raymond hasn't given himself a shot at a double yet. And he's a maximum away from a finish here. He needs the lot. And Jamie again, after nine darts, is on a shot to take the leg. 135. That's a costly last dive. Jamie required 147. Now he's got a cushion. He can lay back and just get this finished. Treble 10 or treble 18. And this time he changes tactic. And he's back on a double that gave him his first leg of the night. And a 147, Jamie. That's a set up Ronnie O'Sullivan had been proud of. And there's not an awful lot Raymond Smith can do from here. It's 105. In the hands of Jamie, Jamie Kelly. requires 16. This is the time when you've got to breathe deep. Game stare shot that double eight leg. out. Jamie Kelly. It's more dark like this. This is going to put a spanner in the works because Raymond Smith had a real Full potential leg. to it's begin Jamie to, to run away first. with this Game group. On. A big win, I'm sure that's what his strategy was. As he stepped up, because when he played Jamie last night, it was a it was a tough encounter, but Raymond Smith was always in control. Forty and won the match four two, and probably expected a similar result. This opens the group wide open. It is fair to say that Jamie has never played this well in a Motor Super Series match. He is well above the hundred mark, and we will see how he can finish this off potentially, but. It's 100. fair to say that Raymond hasn't played poorly. It's that Kelling has found another level. 
You have seen people lose from 3 0 up this week. But if Jamie maintains his accuracy on that 60, he's not losing this game. And look at that first start. That's as perfect as it could be. He can be so attacking on that 60. He made that look simple. And this is fast, but to, well, turning into maybe the performance of the entire week. 115.38. You can visually see Raymond Smith, the shock in his face because this was not Jamie require eighty one this morning. Can he finish it off straight away without hesitation on the bullseye? Fifty six lane was perfect. Raymond to require eighty one. It's a positive shot, but Smith has been the master at this over the course of the last four days, taking shots like this, and he needs double thirteen. To stop Kelling from getting a second bite of the cherry. 55. Just nudges it a little bit too Jamie far right. And Kelling is surely going back to double eight. Surely. Good play to get back in the race. What a result this would be if he finds it. Nine. How did it miss? Raymond to require 26. Double 13, not a double that you see too often because of the fear of going inside. Game shot on the fourth Raymond line. Smith. Raymond just Smith. Just gives him some breathing space. He'll, I don't think he'd be considering winning it right now because there's only one person Fifth who's playing so well. But first. you've just got to be. One on. thing Raymond Smith is good at, he's a real thinker, a very, very intelligent dart player. And he will know, he'll keep it simple. He'll be thinking, hold my throw and a 3 2. Will Jamie Kellen then begin to think? And that's, for me, at this point, the 91. only chance that Raymond Smith has got of getting something out of this game because he will have the dart and two of the next three legs. Will Jamie B. Kellen be thinking of those missed doubles? 100. Try and minimise the damage for starters. And then, like Glenn says, see if your opponent just falters a little bit and then pick him apart. Now, 100. Raymond has seen people lose from 3-0 up this week. He'd like to join the club of people who have done it from 3-0 down. It would be vital at this point because it would bolster Raymond's position at the top. But we can't count the chickens before they're hatched. Didn't Raymond's son play at Ali Pali the same time as him? Kai Smith, yeah, he didn't. Played it was full potential, but to have a father son combination at Ali Pali was a great story. That was a diamond of a last dart there. Just feels so much better when you hear the 100 score with a dart being the last one. All of a sudden, Raymond Smith thinking of the unthinkable of three minutes ago because this should have been dead and buried at 4 0. Thinking, and the other players in the group would be thinking, it's still all to play for. I'm sure from three from five, many players have already put Raymond Smith through to the final tomorrow. Certainly the commentary team did. Well, in four legs, 60. Jamie Kelly allowed Raymond Smith two darts at a double. There are going to be more now. And that might be how this match changes. Double 16. 38. And that's where he's been really good. The deadly boomerang. Do you remember him? <laughs> good nickname. 125. Very, very Raymond required 32. So and he was very, very persistent. He was, it's almost like he was placing the Game dot in the board, the just play. like Raymond. Raymond and now Smith. it's 3 2. Anything's possible. They always say repetition is key. And Raymond Smith throw it's every to throw single first. time. Game on. And it's not natural, I think. Maybe Paul no more, but uh, you know, that's something I believe Raymond's worked on. He's trying to get the optimum. He's trying to get the maximum 100. from his talent. From every sinew of his body, he's worked on this throw. And his eyes, just look at that. I always say never. Just make sure you throw where you're aiming. He hasn't blinked once yet. Do you remember 2002 when Tony David won that world championship 97. and how good he was on double top? Yes. It's yeah. the one thing I remember about that tournament more than anything else. Anything else, He was just so good on double top that 
it got to the stage in the middle of that final that when he was on it, the leg was done. Yeah, I remember um, Chris Mason being interviewed before, and I think he was in the same Super League team as Tony David, and he said this guy is something special, and, and just throwing in old money, 30 averages for fun. So I don't think it was any 100. shock to the guys in London uh, who were playing with uh, Chris and Tony David, but yeah, he was a deadly boomerang, was something special that week, that's for sure. 96. Telling done well to get to the finish first. It's the first time he's done that in a couple of legs. He's bounced back well here because it could have been very easy to fold when you see your opponent come back and you've had missed out at a double. But resilience is really important in the game of darts. 140. Jamie required 170. That's a world-class 140. Just to keep himself in with a shout. We've seen big 94. finishes throughout the Ranger course of this week. 164. 164 would be one of the most impressive in this spot. And Kelling will get another look to get a vital two points against the favourite for Group B. 60. It was this Jamie shot that he missed. 76. Well, he's not going to get a shot at double eight. It's going to be a different double top. On this tops, does he? 36. High Raymond Jumatai, 104. This will change the game. If he finds 50 more, he's got the darts on the last leg. Double 16. 88. Now Jamie gets what Jamie we all crave 40. in matches like this. Three clean darts at a double of his choosing. Game and he gets the win. And the match. Back in Jamie the Kevin. race is JK. He came out of the traps like a prize greyhound. He did stumble a little bit. He says that his hand's shaking a bit. I don't blame him. That's just adrenaline, Jamie. And you should be very, very proud of that performance. You maintained a three-figure average throughout. It was a little bit higher after three and a half legs, but he doesn't care. He don't get bonus points for averages, but 40% on the doubles ultimately is good enough to get him onto four points and it does bring his leg difference to all square it's now over to alexander mertz and johnny haynes to see how they do in their first game of the night after the break
Welcome back to the Motors Super Series. It's the final night of qualification for Champions Night tomorrow evening. And we have just seen Jamie Kellen kick off the evening with a ton-topping average to get the better of Raymond Smith by four legs to two. Next up for us is a first appearance of the evening for Alexander Merckx and Johnny Haynes. And watching this one in the commentary box, it's Paul Nicholson and Glenn Dovent. Thanks, Henry. Interesting first game, wasn't it? Alexander Merckx now up against Johnny Haynes. And you have to say that this 28-year-old from the Netherlands had a pretty good Thursday night, picking up six points. And if he gets the win against Johnny Haynes, the 58-year-old from Wiltshire, Johnny will be very much in trouble. But Alexander the Great, as he's known, was very close to great. Can he be part of the elite when it comes to Super Series 2? I think a lot of people thought, Glenn, that he was going to be eliminated. First leg, it's Alexander well, to throw we looked first. at each other yesterday. Game on. When we sit here before, a couple of hours before the play, we sort of get the websites out and look at the current form. And Alexander, let's just sort of say... 95. He's a stinker. He'd gone to challenge to it, hadn't won a game. He didn't do too bad at Q School, to be fair. He finished in 31st position, which is in that tough European school, you know, wasn't 100. too bad. There's some good results there, but... He opened up against Raymond Smith and was blitzed off the board 4-0. It was over and done in sort of 59. minutes. And I did fear from him, but I tell you what, he bounced back and I thought he was absolutely terrific to win his next three games. The fact that he was able to average over 97 81. in seven legs as well against Jamie Kelling in match three tells you a little bit of something about him. 58. Because after losing to Raymond Smith, he didn't lose... And he got himself in this strong position, but I think if he gets two wins tonight, 140. more than safe. That scenario that I mentioned earlier about Sean Griffiths from seven days ago, that's quite a rare situation. I've seen people qualifying four points before, mm. but getting eight and not getting through, that's a rare thing. But just be safe, <laughs> Alexander. Win your first couple of games 84. and Alexander breathe out. 149. Yeah, one thing I've learned, though, is never to write off Johnny Haynes. Alexander sets it up nicely. Johnny, you're requiring Johnny 96. Haynes, I just felt couldn't play as bad as he did yesterday, and I just thought he was going to have a better night. And these are the types of finishes because... I think he just missed the treble there. 56. So Alexander, you require 52. Merckx here, getting a 52. It's all about these two dark combinations. Aim, Sean, the first line. He was so proficient Alexander yesterday, Burks. and that trend once again continues, and he continues to impress. Because I second leg, it's Johnny to throw first. I really fancy game Johnny Haynes for this game. I just felt he was the one guy today what no one was really talking about, and I thought he would come out this one hundred play really well. But absolute kudos to Alexander. If Johnny was to lose this match, 81. he would remain on two points and his leg difference would plummet a little bit more. He's actually been cut adrift a bit in that category now, thanks to that Kelling win. Kelling has gone to four 60. points and all square with his leg difference. Johnny's on two, minus seven, so he needs to get a move on. Now, I, like Glenn, actually fancied Johnny to get out of this tonight. I thought he'd make top three in possibly third position. If he's going to play at the same level as yesterday, 100. I'm not sure he will do it because some of the missed doubles really cost him yesterday. In fact, 100. he's averaging 87.17 for the week. He averaged 89 yesterday to Johnny, but it, for some reason it didn't feel that good. No, it 100. didn't. And I said, I don't think he'll play as bad. And then when you look at the stats, you know, we've seen people play a lot worse and finish on more points, but this guy, and I, like, I like the trajectory Johnny of the dark going in. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Jamie Kellens, the entry. And this 1-4-1, well, it looked even tougher when he looked at the scoreboard to see Alexander 85. the Great. Alexander, you require 40. 40 points. Impressive. Game on the second line. Clinical. Alexander Decisive. Burks. The Dutchman is absolutely playing out of his skin. He's on a three-win spin Third right now. Alexander to throw first. Game on. And like you said, there's two big wins today, and that'll be tough to overtake. Ten points, I think, will 81. be his target right now. It's got a bit of a ring to that. Three wins spin. I kind of like it. Just 
up the number by one and then another one and another and it'll still have a nice ring to it. What he would like is a seven win spin and that would give him a lot of points going into Saturday night and a great deal of 36. confidence as well. Yeah, I must admit, I think you know Dart and I would have predicted a Raymond Smith win in the last game, a failure. I'd have predicted a Johnny Haynes win in this game. Currently pending, currently pending with a deficit. 43. Doesn't give you a great deal of information, does he? He gets on with his darts, he throws them quickly, and then retreats to the back of the stage with little emotion. In fact, the only time he's ever shown any was when he won his week about 11 weeks ago. First max of the 60. match goes to Johnny, Johnny Haynes. Require 81. Very welcomed as well to try and get into this match. First maximum, hopefully coupled with his first double. Double 16. 49. Not just yet. Thankfully for him, he's got time on his side. 140. Might as Johnny well just get rid of it now, Johnny. 32. Don't give him a shot. Johnny Haynes, we've talked about him, look like he's not playing well. He's just shy of 100 again here, but he's messing about on his doubles. 16. And it's not the Alexander side of the board he prefers. That's four attempts at double 16 now. What a finish this would be. And it's double 12. Game what Sean an unbelievable Alexander response Merckx. from Alexander Merckx. Once again, magnanimous in defeat, sportsmanship at its highest. But they're the oh, types of moments. To throw first. Game on. Whenever you look back for your biggest prize in amateur sport, 20 grand to the winner, they're the types of moments just to show people what you're made 100. of. We had our concerns. And I tell you what, he's eradicating each one and really stiffen up after the 1 4 1. I actually thought he was going to hit that. Johnny well, Johnny, you're going to have to hit this because he's not going to miss what he's left. Simple as that. Must hit. 20. Now, Alexander, Alexander you've you done a marvellous job so far. And this would put you very close to qualification. Double eight still. No He's score. Not there yet. Johnny, you require it's 40. To just tighten up, but they look well thrown down. Don't anticipate him missing this tops, especially after that marker. Oh, dear. Game shot on the fourth leg. Johnny Haynes. Third Dart City. Welcome to Third Dart City, Alexander. You thought you were coming back, didn't Alexander you? But Johnny had other ideas. And then you get the concerns about how will you, will you be affected by that. 136. And then he comes with that 136. He's like Dirk van Dijvenbord as he sprints to the board. He snaps his darts out. He would be good tomorrow because there's a lot of sedate, slow players 100. sort of qualifying, experienced players. This guy's lightning quick. Just watch him as he dives to get these dart, but these darts out. 140. I'll dive on board. Average attention span of a Dutch male player is about two and a half seconds, 100. which is what it takes Alexander to deliver three darts, pretty much. Maybe a little bit longer. He's not Ricky Evans. He's not yellow class. But he could be. Paul, how good were them last two darts there? Amazing. 85 left after nine. And considering he's already missed three match darts, Alexander, you this is an amazing 85. recovery. Now, what's he going to do? He's going to go for double eight again. Game and this time he's going to hit it. And the match. Four legs to Alexander one. Merks. And his position has just got even better. He's now on eight points. He's won four straight matches in this group and his leg difference has also gone to plus five there's nothing but good things and good times ahead for alexander Merckx. look at that for a performance that's his second best of the group so far and johnny haynes is back against the wall because he's still on two points with only three matches to go the best he can do now is eight points he may have to win all three matches that he has left jimmy kelling after all of that in the five legs that we've just seen He's just about to come back to the board and we will see Adam Mould for the first time tonight after the break.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. Alexander Merckx put in a great performance, a 4-1 victory against Johnny Haynes, an average just under 96, including a 1-4-1 checkout and 4 out of 7 on his doubles. It has been a really good uh, night standard-wise in this session. As we look ahead to Champions Night tomorrow, where someone is going to emulate Conan Whitehead by picking up £20,000 and the Super Series trophy. Let's remind you of how he won it against Graham Usher back in October. Is 44. Conan, you're required. Good enough. 44. For cool. I bet his heart is pumping at a million miles an hour at this point. Double 16. Game Whitehead shot. wins the title. And, the and wins and the, the jackpot Super along Series with it. Champion. Under the confetti here. Conan. At the Wallace Live Whitehead. Lounge. Whitehead is the man. He is the last man standing, and he is the person that cannot be moved from the pinnacle here of stage one. Four nil in the final, he just had too much in the arsenal for the gambler. What a stage, what a champions week, what a finals night, and that may be the catalyst for the career of Conan the Barbarian. What wonderful memories, and you can be here tomorrow night to create that unbelievable atmosphere and that 20 grand winning prize simply by going to dartshot.tv and the tickets are free. So when Jamie Kellen walked in the venue today, maybe about eight o'clock, his strategy was simple. Let's get out the traps quickly against Raymond Smith. I know it's a tough ask, but if I can get through him, that'll put me in the top three. And then I'm back straight on in game three against Adam Mould. And all of a sudden then, I'm first right in the mix. Jamie to throw first. Well, the first part of it Game on. was done. The second part against Adam Mould is pending. Kelling got the result yesterday against Mould in game eight. It started his campaign off. Can he do the double against the man who looks a bit like Ant-Man's sidekick tonight? The Wasp. That is a very fetching shirt. I'm just thinking, the Motor Super Series logo, black and yellow. Uh, Raymond Smith likes his black and yellow. 140. So I think Jamie Kellum will have to rub his eyes and check he's just not thinking he's playing the same players here. I'm a big fan of black and yellow. It's the colours of my American football team. So I salute the Mouldy. I love that shirt. Yes, Mouldy. One of the uh, nicknames we were chatting about yesterday. We asked him how he came up with that. Only joking. I'm sure there's something better out there. But I did enjoy watching him yesterday. He started off really, really well. But he was in that scenario where he didn't finish. Like he started. So when you go back to the hotel, how do you feel? Do you see is it a missed opportunity? Or are you happy to be on four points overnight? 41. A new day. Require 170. And he knows he can beat Jamie Kellen. He knows he can lay a marker here. And this, for me, this is a real 50-50 game. One hundred and thirty-four. talked a little bit about Jamie Tony David earlier in the night. In fact, Moldy's using a dart that's very similar to that of Tony David, but it's the ball! Oh, Jamie. Adam, you require that would have been a 36. blockbuster. Mould couldn't breathe for a few seconds. Can he still take leg one? Got to get closer. No Not score. close enough. Jamie yeah, required the frustrating 45. moments. They're the types of opportunity. But it's opportunity knocks for Jamie Kellen. It's double 16. He normally likes the Game double chops, but that's a line. great Jamie transition Kelly. from one side of the board to the other. Jamie Kellen's in the mood tonight. I'm just looking at that share, Paul. What Second would you rather be? Or a wasp? First. Game on. I don't like wasps. I got stung in the neck by one. I've got a vendetta against them ever since. I'd rather be the ant. 140. Better dart some mouldy. You've got a bit of yellow on the flights here from a guy called the Yellow Submarine. Yes, 100. that is his dart's nickname. We talked an awful lot yesterday how quickly Adam Mould is right behind you. As you're throwing your let's have a little look at this as Jamie Kellen throws 100. his darts. No players complained anything, so just ignore me, but Mouldy barely stands still for long. Watch dart three. On its way, he's already going into 60. the yellow zone. 
He's not hanging around. I get the feeling that nobody in this group has got a problem with it, but maybe if he's up against Matt Clark tomorrow or maybe Jim McEwen, he might have to hold his horses a little bit. 180. That's what you call letting the horses fly. They certainly have problems with darts like that, but here comes Kelly. 140. Adam, you require 81. Quality affair against just 100 after average after 100 average midway through these games to date. 49. What players need to do now is see that transition out because it's, they're all starting very, very nicely. This is very competitive group. In three from five. Adam, you're going to get to a stage very, very soon where myself and Paul Game show will do all fingers leg. and thumbs as Adam we're working Mold. out the permutations for you. Who's, who's going to qualify? Stay with us tonight because this is getting exciting. It's not going to be more complicated than Group James C, the surely. But then again, I've said that before. And Group B can be very complicated. Last Friday, it was a little bit of a mathematical nightmare 30. towards the end. When Fallon Sherrick won her last game of the group, she qualified. I suppose when we think about tonight's schedule, Raymond Smith 57. and Alexander Merckx will be hoping that they're already qualified before they play in game 10. I have a funny feeling that they may be safe by then. I've highlighted a couple 60. of games, Paul, but I've highlighted game four next. All ready to big moan because one, are we going to see the detachment of Johnny Haynes, which then bunches up position Pulsy one to six. four, and then picking three from four is going to be tough. And I've also, that last game really stands out, Smith against Merckx. Because Merckx right now is flying crest of a wave. 100. Mould yesterday was averaging 84.69, but that's quite deceiving because he was much better in his first two games than he was in his second two. Three maximums, high out of 121. But ultimately, talking about him having four points overnight, if you'd have offered him that at the start of the night, he would have said, yeah, that's all right, I'll take that. But if you'd have offered him that after three matches, he would have said, absolutely not. 41. Ultimately, I think he went to bed last night quite disappointed. Watch out for the 136. Sounds like a song. 136. But it's not. We do like that 136 uh, from 17. We've seen that a few times today. Do you know, know there's actually a song called Who's Afraid of 138? Is there? There is a song, and I sent it to Keith Della once. It's not his kind of music. I've heard of the wolf version. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? It's Jamie Kellen looking at tops right now. Had this leg. In the palm of his hands. Game show on the what third leg. What that is. Jamie and you can Kelly. see the reaction from Jamie, who doesn't give it large too much. But I think he's thinking right now, I came Fourth in with leg, a plan. Adam to throw first. I have to beat Game Raymond up. Smith. No one's going to expect me to do that. And then if I can get across the line against Adam Mould, I'm in prime position all of a sudden. It's working like an absolute team at the moment. Well, as it stands, ultimately, Adam is playing his first game of the night. Jamie, his second. And Jamie will finish first 96. out of the five players. That is a big, big thing. So he's the one who can set the target for the top three. But ultimately now, he is in the top three. If he beats Mould, who's currently in fourth position, he will create that little bit of separation. And maybe he can run and take the confidence into 96. a game with Johnny Haynes in game six, which if Jamie can win his first three games tonight, and get it done before he plays Alexander Merckx in game eight. He could be home and host if the results go his way. Yeah. The fear we had earlier, sort of jumping ahead of ourselves. Like I said, it's just 59. so many things can happen. I was just looking while Paul was talking that. This throw of Adam, and yesterday, the first two games, that release, as he's thrown the dart there, the smoother 41. the better. And I just felt it was just getting a little bit. Maybe snatch is the wrong word. A little bit jabby. Where this is just silky smooth. He comes from the ceiling, the dart. He just drops and uses his height. Adam, you require 128. And a slow more of the dart going of um, would really surprise you if you've seen Jamie's. That's a bad dart from Adam. He won't like that at all. It was a rush dart, that Paul. Yeah, he's playing very quick tonight. Forty. Well, and good when you're hitting Jamie shots and you're in a rhythm, but sometimes when you're playing too quickly. Things can break down. Even the transition from left hand to right hand can break down. 
Jamie's going to leave himself 97. tidily Has placed. And because of that dodgy visit from Adam, he's now got to convert 80, which is now 15 ball. Bullseye. Oh, Game beautiful recovery. What a resuscitation in leg number four. That was a wonderful shot. Fifth leg, it's Jamie to throw first. And once Game again, on. the sportsmanship between the guys. Unparalleled. Just a little nod of the head there from Jamie. 3 1 and 2 2. He didn't want to do that. The obvious there. He didn't want to do that at all. 45. He wanted to see him miss that ball and take him to 3 1 up. But it was one of, yes, good shot. Yeah, I never really agreed with anything. I used to just look down and not mid game anyway. I'd like the sportsmanship before and after, but mid game, unless it was something like a nine or something like that. Was 60. When someone used to hit a shot like that against me, three letters would echo through my brain. U G H. Ugh. Made me feel sick. 60. But you still nod your head in approval and you say, yep, yeah, good shot. And that was a great recovery from Adam. Keep himself in the match. Here at 2 2. Kelly may be shaken by 60. it a bit. He's looking at breaking here, Paul. Already he's taking the darts here. Jamie Kelly's had one of them legs after someone's just hit the bull against you. 125. That may be a really big turning point, that bullseye. Ninety-six. There is going to be a bit of a dogfight for that third position, you feel. But ultimately. Johnny Haynes against Raymond Smith. What a match that is. What a match it is 19. for Johnny Haynes. If he loses again, the best he can do is six points. Jamie's not going to leave 100. 100. He can't get to a finish. 86. Advantage Adam if this goes. And it's not going to be the bullseye this time. It's double 16. Game shot and he's taking play. the lead. Adam mold. What a strange old game this has been, but you have to admire the fact that Mould is averaging over 95 all of a sudden. Like it's Adam to throw by first. virtue of some really Game good on. stuff. Kelling has dropped to 85. And all of a sudden, this game has changed dramatically. And that second dart there is 123. Absolute peach. It's just as he was taking the ascendancy. That treble one just gives some hope there for Jamie Kelling. The two trebles are like a dagger to the heart. 46. It's advantage Mould right now. What a topsy-turvy group. Nitty-gritty, up and down. You'll never Sons hear a cleaner say that, Glenn. 100. Advantage mould. Yes, I was looking at any analogies of mould, and I only came up with damn proof course, so I'm struggling to get any puns in. I think Chris Murphy's about the only one I know who'd get a couple of puns in regarding mould. Oh, I'm sure he's got, a, he's got a bucket full. He's got puns on everything. He's got more than Tim Vine. Well, Charlie didn't do bad this week, did he? One hundred and eight. Yeah, Charlie Costafino, you know, referee, had a bit of a a tirade of one-liners when we were going from one place to 60. another the other day. Adam, we got to the stage, we actually told him to be quiet. Yeah, he filled his escort up with diesel. Well, really? 4-2? 66. Well, Jamie is basically watching along from the distance because Adam has gone a little bit berserk. Over the last few legs, 60. especially Adam, since that incredible bullseye recovery shot. Adam Mould, who yesterday was 2-0 after Game the first two shot. games. He looked and like a match. different player. Adam Mould. And once again, a look at the reaction. They all seem to be beating each other tonight. It's going to take someone to step up. Right now, it's Alexander Merckx is doing well, but Adam Mould has done his job. And look at the tail of the tape. 97.52 average, three maximums. 44% on the outer ring. 86 finish being the highlight for Adam. That is a job well done because Jamie Kellum was just in good form. Was that bullseye a 2-1 down? The turning point not only for that match, but this group. Well done, Adam Mould. Next up is a game I've highlighted for a real potential cracker. It's Johnny Haynes, who's a little bit detached right now, against Raymond Smith, who needs to get back to winning ways right now. Back after this short break.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. One more sleep until the big occasion. Champions Night at the Motor Super Series is tomorrow. There's still a selected number of tickets available. Head over to dartshot.tv to claim them, and they are complimentary free of charge to see a big, big finals night tomorrow. In our previous game, we saw Adam Mould average 97.5 and, and get three 180s in a success against Jamie Kelly, which puts him onto six points alongside Alexander Mertz, with Raymond Smith out on top on eight points. He's in our next match. He takes on Johnny Haynes, and in the commentary box, Here's Glenn and Paul. Thank you very much, Henry. This is now a must-win game for Johnny Haynes. From here on out, he must win each match to qualify, we feel, because he has a leg difference of minus 10, and he only has two points as well, and we already have three players on six points or better. This guy's got six. Adam Mould's got six. And Alexander Merckx has got eight. So if Haynes loses here, he can only get to six points, and the others are going to get more, you feel. So over to you, Johnny. Can you get your first win against Raymond Smith since the very first game of Monday morning? Let's find out, shall we, in what is a very key first game. Gets Johnny to throw first. <laughs> game on. Yeah, the question is, can Johnny be good? He's a superb player, Johnny Haynes, an absolute legend in sort of the southwest area, the Bristol Swindon area. Easy one. He was unbelievable when I commented on the week that he won. Fantastic crowd he brought down with him as well, which would be a, a credit for here tomorrow night. But the guy in your picture there, after that surprising opening loss of the Easy day, one. I would fear for the first time this week if he loses this game. I don't think we're going to be short of locals tomorrow. Because Scott Walters is going to be here. He's going to bring a truck full. And I'm sure we're going to get Jamie Kelling or Adam Mould, who aren't that far from here. We might even get both of them. But if Johnny Haynes is here, there will be plenty of people coming from Wiltshire. Not that far away, in fact. 60. Scarce to see it. Don't think any Aussies are coming. Apart from maybe some of the local Aussies that live in the Portsmouth area. Yeah. Maybe Simon Whitlock will come down because he's not far from here. In fact, Corinne Hammond, one of our commentary colleagues, I'm sure she's going to come down to support her fellow Aussie. I think she was in the crowd last week supporting Fallon. Yeah, they're good friends. A surprisingly slow start here from 60. Smith. Is he feeling the effects of a fifth day at the hockey? They're both playing their fifth day and indeed today, John Henderson hit the wall and he ultimately bowed out. And this is not looking good for one of the first one of Dozer's tips. Where he had Raymond Smith with a handicap of minus 1.5 legs. Would you have still gone for that? Johnny requires had you known the result of the first game? No, I don't think I would because for the first time, we're seeing just a touch of distress. From Raymond Smith, he's looking round, looking at scoreboards. He doesn't look as focused as he was. That last defeat was a shock to the system. Ordinarily, when he does get a defeat, because he has been defeated a few times, his response is Johnny exemplary. Forty. He's never lost two straight games Game the in first any leg. campaign. Johnny Haynes. But Johnny Haynes takes the first leg in 16 darts. And that means that Raymond is under the pump. Second leg, it's Raymond to throw first. Got to start finding that first dart a little bit closer to the 60. That first one there is 100. about as bad a first dart as he's had all week. But he still walks away with a ton. 
I was going to mention if we had a heat map on that treble area for every time he's through a dart it would all be in the area that Johnny Haynes is hitting right now and is just beginning to worry me that is not looking as comfortably as them for the rest of the week I mean let's be honest with you he should have won groove here yesterday he could have gone back really with eight points let's be honest with you we've talked about him being in the final all week before he's gone there 64. All of a sudden, I mean, talk is cheap. He probably didn't listen to an awful lot because he's such a strategist, such a thinker. He'd have mapped his area of exactly what he wanted to do this week. I said to him, maybe you could see the positives of not, of not going through group here like Jim McEwen, so you could continue to be on the dartboard in relation to the, the distance you've travelled. Um, some of the dart players in there have just sort of been listening to his wise words about the 57. game. 57. Raymond, you require he's been quite an influential character in the uh, in the players area. I'm not surprised to hear that. He's got at least six starts and 170 here. <laughs> He'd like a treble 18 just to make things a bit easier, but not the beat. So Haynes is not out of this leg. If he finds a two treble visit or even a three, this could be a very interesting climax to leg two. 81. Oh, that Raymond one just finds the wrong bed, and he's still got six. For taking care of leg two. That was a bit fortunate for Raymond to give him some breathing space. He's so far away from the target, Paul, isn't he? It's just not unlike him. But sometimes, 52. sometimes, Paul, you have to win ugly. And he's been very dominant in his, some of his wins this week. And maybe just a different facet to his game where he can just, just scrape a 4 3 win. Mid 80 average. Something that we haven't seen from him. Because I tell you what, it might all be good for him. Going into tomorrow night. He's been hitting that shot on 60 all week. Game shot but at least he's got leg. the double 10 to Raymond draw level Smith. at one leg all. Now, you mentioned Glenn, Jim McEwen, who's been qualified since the early part Third of Wednesday afternoon. First. Game on. And if you want a little bit of a giggle for Friday night, please pay attention because Jim got in touch with us this afternoon in the melee of Group C. 100. Said that he left some snacks on the shelf next to the window in his hotel room and decided, I think I need a bit of fresh air in here. Bit of a breeze came in and took all his snacks and they went all out the window. Poor Jim. Lost his pork pie, didn't he? Typical Scotch. I mean, he'd been scraping the one and using the three-second rule. There's no way. And I, I did send him a reply and I said, there's no way 60. that that pork pie wasn't gobbled up by a seagull. <coughs> Not round here. They're like vultures round here. More like a fox. I've seen a few foxes around here. Well, I think we're going to need a little bit of cunning. 100. Like a fox for Raymond, who does need to break Johnny in this match. Now, I mentioned that they've played each other since Monday morning. 121. First game of the week was this fixture. It was a 4-3 win for Haynes. And since then... Domination for Raymond, who has won 12 legs, losing two. 60. Not including this match here. And he's just showing his disappointment now. I'm just saying different, Sam. Just focusing, not so much on the game. I'll leave that to Paul a little 100. bit here. Just keep my eye on Raymond Smith, and I'm just sort of seeing disappointments. His facial mannerisms, he's sort of growling a little bit, and he's just not happy with the way that t tonight has gone. We haven't seen an awful lot of this because he's just so robotic. He's he's trained not to show any emotion to his players. One hundred, Johnny, you require one hundred. I'm sure he studied psych psychology or something because it's yeah, it's so fairly robotic. But right now, it's all about Johnny Haynes, relaxed, one hundred, laid back, incredibly laid back character is uh, Johnny Haynes, and probably not the person you want to play when you're fighting for your place in Saturday night. He's struggling with that first start. But he's got such a gift of being able to Johnny get those darts over 20. the top that it was still a world-class visit. The problem was that he wasn't on a finish. Double five. Never does for, that. For most people. 16. But now Smith Raymond does get the look 41. for the six-visit break. And what I would say, Paul, is two double four at the way he's gone. He was unbelievable the night. You know, the week he won it. 
He's stuck with that tremor. This double eight is massive. Game shot on the third line. Oh, what a dart Raymond that Smith. is. That's by far the best dart he's thrown tonight. Will it make him relax? I have a funny Full feeling it Raymond's will now. First. Game on. He's taking a big breath, and most importantly, it's his dart now. So he's just thinking, just give me a 15 dart. That's the type of dart. And both Paul waved his arm at the dartboard at the same time together. One hundred and thirty-one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. He's back in the ro that robotic zone of his. It takes so much pressure off the rest of the visit when you get that 60 with your AZ premier five. shot, you could say. And then your secondary and tertiary shots can just flow as soon as you find that first one. Look, no hesitation with the next shot. And he's turning up the intensity 100. microscopically here. He's just gritting his teeth there. I think he's ready to go down and dirty tonight. I I think, and I'm going to give him the ultimate Australian compliment here. If he was a fast bowler, he'd be Glenn McGrath. Someone who doesn't bowl the fastest ball, but he bowls one of the most accurate balls. He's not got loads 60. of 180s in the locker. In fact, over yesterday's play, he only got four. Not a lot, really, when you consider how good he is. But every time I mention 180, someone seems to hit one today. And the 210. I don't think you'll be seeing the 180. You may even see the 18s come into the Nine equation. Johnny so that 112 he likes, but Johnny hints from absolutely nowhere. That 180 brought him right back in this. Options, treble 20 or two data tops. He's just gone into that and he won't four. like them last two darts. He has left the two darts. But these are the types of finishes. If you're gonna win it this week, these are the types of finish that you wanna be remembered for going into tomorrow night. And he's gonna have one dart at tops. Ninety two. I'm surprised he missed Johnny that because one one six and one one two this week seem to be predictably brilliant from Smith. Double top for Haynes. Yeah, Immediate break back. Day. Johnny Hayes. What a great fixture this is. And so far, we just don't know who's going to win this one. I wouldn't be surprised to see another break Fifth in Johnny leg number five. First. Game on. Fine, fine margins for the two Group A graduates here in Group B. Just does his tips is hanging by a thread. I needed Raymond Smith to win by 4-2 or less. But that's the kind of dart he loves. 140 minimum. 100. 140 minimum after that first dart, and he snatches them darts out. We haven't seen an awful lot of this side of Raymond this week. But Haynes, he continues to do what Johnny Haynes does. 140. That's to punish that treble 20 bed. And he's 90 ahead. He's beginning to take control of this game, and got the music to his ears as he sees Raymond Smith drop low. That's 57. telling me there's a little bit of tension in their arm. Doing a lot of stretching behind Johnny again. And Johnny's found that treble 20 bed, and look at this now. 140. And the big favourite backers today won't be doing so well. That first game of the night, Raymond Smith losing to Kellen, and then Johnny Haynes losing to Merckx, and then Moore beating 60. Kellen. Just been doing some digging into some 180 stats for the week. Raymond Smith has got 13 180s for the week. And Scott Walters has got 30 in two 82. days. There's a little bit of perspective for you. Scott Walters has played 20 games. We're now into day five for Raymond Smith. He played 15 in the first three days. And another four. Johnny, you this is his 21st 89. match. It's a very fair statistic comparison, that. And now, double 16 for Haynes yeah, gives him the 3-2 the lead. Johnny what on earth is happening in this group? Nothing is predictable. Someone has broken Six, though, Mystic Meg. To throw first. Game on. And apologies to anyone that follows Dusser's tips. Because we're falling at the first fence. And me more than anyone is surprised at the start of Raymond Smith tonight and that worrying concerns on his face. He doesn't demonstrate that with that 180 there, but I can assure you he's feeling it right now because 
And all of a sudden, he'll be looking over his shoulder. 45. And Kellen Mould and Merckx will be lapping this up. One of the main reasons he was at the top of the table before we started tonight was that he won two games yesterday by four legs to nil. 100. That will always do your leg difference some good. Yeah, but tonight, it's just not going that way. When he's good, he's good, isn't he? It's just needs to maybe run out to win ugly. 43. So far, so good. Looks like Haynes is not turning up here in leg six. But Raymond is. Down for the 17s. 137. Uses that an awful lot. And I love that play. I didn't last night because I needed a 180. 140. Good response Raymond from Haynes. 84. It's all about Raymond Smith, this leg of darts. And I think already he's thinking of that last leg. He's when he does these two dark combinations, as good as anything I've seen, which double six, he just moves across it, which he does on double six, double four. 72. That's no actually not a bad yet. miss, that, because you don't want to be stuck on double three. I think what he was doing there was aiming about a centimetre right, and if he pulled it a little bit, it would jag the double six. 79. The last Ranger thing he wanted to do 12. was be stuck on double three, especially with time to spare. This time he can be a bit more aggressive. Game there you go. The play. He knows Raymond what he's doing. Smith. 13 data. We're going the distance for only the second time this week in this fixture. So and the last time leg, they did, Johnny, to throw first. Johnny won. Game on. How crucial, though, that Johnny has the darts. Oh, Rim's not even looking. He continues with his stretching. And that's the last thing he wants to hear. And you can actually see the disappointment as he hear Charlie shout that 140. He just prayed to hear you 45 or 60. There's another Aussie dart player a few years ago who played at the World Championship called Sean Reed. Bit of a character. And he played a lot of darts in Japan. And he told me that when he was training himself and getting other people to help him 60. to become a better dart player, he would be at the hockey, and if he did something wrong, somebody would whip him with a cane and hit the back of his calf. And the thing that reminded me of that was the bowing of Raymond Smith that he's already done tonight to exercise his hip flexors and his lower back. He may have a little bit of discomfort at this stage of the week, which is not alien to a lot of the players here in Champions Week. I'll tell you what, if someone was hitting 60. me with a cane in the past two years, I think I'll have lost about six inches. Chance to get to a finish first, but it must be two trebles. Now he just wants to be in the same time, vicinity. My favourite all-time WWE uh, moment, Kane doing impressions of The Rock and um, Hulk Hogan. Did you ever see that one? Indeed. 100. See, that was another wrestling thing there. That was a bit more hipster. Indeed. Matthew Edgar will get that one. Yeah, I've, I've done, played off the rest. Was it off on the ball or something? And I then try and uh, get 20 wrestlers in 100. 30 seconds. Johnny required 141. Now, both on a finish after 12. Who's going to get it? Interesting. A non-treble visit there Raymond makes this interesting. Exactly what Smith needs in this situation. It's 144. He likes the double 12, so he sticks to the treble 20 route. And all he can do now is set it up there. Good markers. Oh, no. Oh He's left 99. Johnny, you require So, 86. Johnny Haynes is now fancying 86 to get the four points on the table. And it's double 16 again. Can he find it? Game he finds the bottom corner. And the match. Johnny And Haynes. Raymond Smith, who was top of the table coming into Friday night, has lost his first two matches. And Johnny Haynes has got himself to four points alongside Jamie Kelling. Now, all of a sudden, we have a table where maybe... Anybody can qualify. This is getting a bit silly. And also, it's really intriguing at the same time. Good match. Sees Johnny Haynes get his second win against Raymond Smith this week. And it's 4-3 again, just like Monday morning. Just shy of the 90 average and 44% on the doubles, as you can see. Our last match of the first half of action here tonight. We'll see both AMs. And it's not the morning. It's Adam Mould against Alexander Mertz.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Raymond Smith has been defeated again, this time by Johnny Haynes by four legs of three, which makes things very interesting in terms of the race for Champions Night tomorrow evening. Because Jamie Kelling and Johnny Haynes play each other in the next match, the winner of this encounter between Adam Mould and Alexander Merckx will be at Champions Night tomorrow evening. So a lot at stake in this middle match here on Friday night at the Super Series. And in the commentary box for it, here's Paul Nicholson and Glenn Dunnett. Yes, quite a lot on the line, Henry. And if you can do it with games to spare, it will spare you a bit of an anxiety glitch later. Especially for Alexander Merckx, who was not as fancied as some of the other players in this group. It is fair to say, but he could be on 10 points with two matches to go. But for Mould, he could be on eight points alongside Alexander with Kelling and Haynes to play each other, like you said. And that comes after the short break between the halves. First leg, it's Adam to throw first. Game on. Yeah, qualification sort of been difficult for so many players. And for Alexander Merckx yesterday, in that first 4-0 defeat, we had the concerns, but it's been pretty seamless since. 60. He's just gotten on with it, just in the players' areas, never off the practice board. It's going to be tough for him to engage too much 60. with the lads, because obviously English is not his number one language, and he's just getting on with the job, basically. And, you know, right now he looks like the form man, and it's... I'm the, you know, the biggest one of surprise, you know, you, you look at the numbers and I, I didn't really fancy him. I think he's going to feel very confident 99. about his chances of getting through in this position. It's very unlikely that he's not. But let's face it, this so far tonight has been an unpredictable 100. evening. If you are a Raymond Smith fan and you may have had a little punt on him winning this group or even just qualifying... Just remember, it's something you need to do responsibly. 18 plus only and begamblerware.org for more information. But if you want some good news, it is the fact that Raymond Smith is on six points. points with a healthy leg difference. When he's lost, he's lost tight. So he's still on plus five and he's still 14 54. legs in front of Johnny Haynes and seven in front of Jamie Kelling. So it's not all doom and gloom. I think they'll be in the area thinking, what on earth has happened tonight? 56. Alexander, you require 148. The man in your picture who's flying high and with a double 14 here. That on is the just first unbelievable. Line. Alexander There's Burks. magnets. There's magnets in them darts right now when it comes to finishes. No eye contact to Adam Mulder, Second just shrugs his shoulders. First. I think Game everybody's realised now, give this man any sort of finish. He's just going to ping it. And that's 59. what confidence does, Paul. Biggest finishes in this group have all belonged to Alexander Merckx. Let's wrap them off, shall we? 38. Because yesterday he got a 140. Tonight he's at a 141, and he's gone big on a 148. Nobody 44. has got a finish like that in this group this week apart from him. The next best, well, it was Johnny Haynes' 132, which was rather good. Yeah. 60. Mightily, mightily impressive. There is a caveat to that, though, because the 180s. We do 57. have a 161 from Raymond Smith, but that was in a different group. Well, so we're going to talk the caveat being Alexander Merckx. If I've got my numbers right here, I think he's had one 180 in this competition. Correct. 180. What is it about us talking about 180s <laughs> and then there's one just appears? Don't say it three times. 99. Well, actually, let's keep saying it. He's going to hit another 180. Oh, well, the spell's broken. That's because the wizard's been eliminated earlier today. Yeah, there's no mystic Paul in here now. 56. You put too much thought into it, you see. We've got to we think to about away. other statistics yeah. before they actually flow. 58. Adam, you require 167. This is a big one. And it's not going to go. Because he's not called Alexander Merckx. You don't, see, you, don't, set it up. you don't see people with the same initials playing each other very often, do you? Mm. We are trying to think of nicknames yesterday. 168. setup. That 82 was 82. a finish that Adam Mull really fancied all of a sudden now. It's twice as difficult. Well, after that first dart, 
Great marker. And all 64. the hard work undone by slipping into that Alexander double seven. Requires 16. And with three darts, Ooh, I was no just going to say with three darts in his hand with a one dart finish, Adam, you require it would possibly, it probably mean only one thing. And then he goes and pings it in the double 11. I don't think Mould was expecting that, or Alexander for that matter. That was a bit of a shock to the system. Surely this is in. The Game double was about the twice the size leg. considering Adam that marker. Mould. Beautifully done. Bit of a let off there for Mouldy. Third leg, it's Adam to throw. Oh, I've first. just thought of my line for Game tomorrow on. night. If he wins this, he could be a golden Mouldy. <laughs> he looks a bit golden. He's covered in yellow. Yeah, I'm just everywhere I'm looking, it's black 98. and yellow. I've got the big Motor Super Series logo in my eye. It's just like being at Akershaw Stadium in Pittsburgh. Yeah. 134. Have you been? See this. No, I've no. I've been to I've been to see the Penguins in Pittsburgh, which was one of the best days of my life. But I've not been to a Steelers game in Pittsburgh yet. I actually had tickets for the Ravens game back in November, but I couldn't go because I was here. We're talking other things and one eighties are going in against Paul. Ninety three. Well, Mould just knows how to get it done in that department. Yesterday he had three. In his first game, he had three. In this game, he's got two. So he has missed a 180 in this group. 60. Adam, you require 102. <laughs> How expensive is that three dart to double eight for Alexander Merck's going to be? Pat 17. 62. That's a lovely set. And all of a sudden, Alexander's second best. 100. He did win this fixture yesterday, Alexander Mertz, by four legs to two, but it was a very different time. Double top. Game and Mould is now leg. in the lead with Adam a 14 Mould. daughter. This is a good contest. I actually did expect at this time of the night Full to see Alexander the best of these first. two, and we've seen glimpses of that, whether it's the 148 from Alexander, the 180s from Adam. 133. And there's still plenty of time to go. I tell you what, after the next game, we are seriously bunching up. 58. No matter what the outcomes are and who wins. There's going to be a lot of people on six points. 100. A lot of people potentially on eight points as well. So stay with us. I don't care what anybody says. Group B is the best group. Sometimes 44. it's even better than Saturday nights. Because of the fact that everybody wants to be there. On Saturday night, people are eliminated really early on Saturday, and, and sometimes in these group B's, we go all the way to game 10, like we did last Friday, which was a tremendous group B. 85. Merckx is coming back in this one now. 98. Scores of 133 ton. Giving him just shy of a 200 point lead, so it's a maximum really required for mould. It's quite the dart shirt he's got on tonight, Alexander. 60. It's like a Alexander movie poster on the back of Alexander the Great. He doesn't have to go 19s on 126. And why would he? He almost takes out another ton plus finish. Stayed in a hotel once in Paphos called Alexander the Great. Any good? 58. Very nice. Alexander, you require 12. See, there you go. You don't see many dark players with a hotel play. named after them. Alexander Merckx. <laughs> I don't think there's a mouldy hotel around here. Well, there might be, <laughs> but I don't think it'll be very good. I stayed in one of them in Hull once. Fifth leg, it's Adam to Alan Norris first. booked it for us. Nine quid. There you go. Nine pounds. Case closed. Alan Norris booked it. We could eat as many mushrooms as you want off the back of the toilet door. 125. It was a shocker. I also remember going to Blackpool. Remember, the, you know, the Jacklins? They done 96. a... How could I possibly forget? Yeah, well, they'd done a booking for, like, you know, join us, our travel club. And I just knocked on the door. I said, excuse me. I said, uh, there's my money. I said, I'm leaving. One hundred and eight. Who's going to be leaving with the points? Funny you mentioned Alan Norris. He's the one person I know from Euro Tour action over the years. The ability of him to find food in any country that we've been to is extraordinary. 
but I never expected him to find food at the back of a toilet door. Must be mushrooms, though. Well, look, it's got to be mushrooms because Henry hates mushrooms. 95. I don't so know much so that I said it's Champions Week. It's a good job it's not Champignons Week. Oh, he's going 16s. I like that play because the treble leaves 56. double 14. Alexander and then he can just lay up and hope that he gets a look. Hope is a dangerous Ooh. thing because 98. Alexander Merckx was toying with the big 40. fish. Mold for the lead. This is a super contest. Very, very even. And it might just change. Alexander, you require 72. The way this guy's been finishing. He's going to have one dart, a double 16. 40. He had to fancy that. And you can see a huge sigh of relief Alexander, there for Adam Mould. 20. I fully expect him to get this. This is what we call the pre-preparation throw. Just getting himself ready. Big, deep breath. Game the fifth leg. The Animal. desired target and ping it. And each time he does it, he keeps with a I think with a crowd tomorrow. I just get the feeling some people will Sick leg. feed it's off of the atmosphere. First. And I just get the feeling, I don't know about you, Paul, that Moldy would enjoy that. 140. I've had a few messages from people who know him quite well. And they are cheering him on tonight, that's for sure. And I have a sneaky suspicion that if he does qualify... 140! In fact, I think he's going to, based on his position. It does look very good at this point, unless he falls off a cliff, scoring-wise. Oh, there's a rare 180 for Alexander! It's only his second one! But I think he would bring quite a few people here. Max with only 60. his second 180 of the whole group. Yeah, top quite of the astounding. Group. Top of the group, Champions where you get only two 180s. I think that just also 64. highlights the staggering consistency around the treble 20 bed, but just his finishing has been unbelievable at times. These are the types of finish. Alexander Give Merckx three darts at double eight for the match. He'd struggle. Give him one one seven. I just feel he's going to get it every single time. It's tops. 97. These are the kind of games that referees love. Nice and quick. Lovely rhythm to it. They do complement each other. It's not going to be a 180 here. 139. But it might well be game shot in the sixth leg. Game shot in the sixth leg. There you go. There's Alex a parrot in here. Works. Six legs in 11 minutes. So then final Proper leg. Darts. It's Adam to throw first. At a good pace. Game on. We did see a game this afternoon that lasted over 25 minutes, actually. But then's the break sometimes. You've got to play 60. at different paces against different players, but when you put these two together, I think they're very comfortable. Yeah, if we were all the same, if we all threw as quick 100. as Alexander and Adam, you, know, you, you need to complement with the strengths and attributes of other players. And it's going to be a big test for anyone playing the Jim McEwens and the Matt Clarks because they bring something different. Wow! Another 180 for Moldy. That's number four. Moldy old door. If he gets the 20 grand. We had a couple of mentions. I don't know if it's Lieutenant Pigeon or Lieutenant Pigeon who sang that. Well, if he's a pigeon, he's trying to mop up the crumbs. 57. Trying to leave the 170. Fails to do so, but Merckx needs to be really effective here. And he does get on level terms pretty much. Just Great. four points behind. Great match. All to play for. Could the fact that Adam Mould is thrown first the decide in fact with the trebles 92. I've gone quiet I can't even begin to tell you how good of a last start that was but for Merckx at 208 he matches his treble 134 oh. he says, I'll, uh, I'll raise you a treble 18 can Adam get rid of this it would be his biggest finish of the night so far 60 and Merckx who has been 74. the king of the finishers could well finish this off if he finds the bullseye. 49. Oh, that's close. Wow. Adam, you require 52. How are you feeling? The times you practice this at home, you walk to the hockey, and you can't prepare for this type of finish. It's whether it's in you, it's whether you've got it. He's doing everything right, may I add. Now it's about Game the execution, shots. and the execution Animals. mirrors Animals. everything he did on that pre-preparation. A fantastic match. Very sporting once again with these guys. Excellently refereed by Charlie there.
But it just swings and roundabouts, this Group B. At one moment, it looked like Raymond Smith was running away. Then it was Alexander Merckx. But out of nowhere, the ADC qualifier, Adam Mould, has put himself in a fantastic position to qualify for Saturday night. Very entertaining. 92.97 average from Alexander. But it's uh, Adam Mould who takes the spoils with 86.83. There's the tail of the tape. And we're back to the break. The game's just getting better and better. Jamie Kellen, Johnny Haynes, must, must win match. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where it's time for the half-time oranges and get the assessment from the asset Paul Nicholson following our first five matches of the evening session and I suppose confused is probably where we are now in terms of where the league table is. We knew it was going to be a tight group and it's come to the fore that way. Yeah, very unexpected start to Friday night. It's got to be said and I love it. <laughs> I think that last match was tremendous. I think a lot of the attention this week in this group was being leveled at Johnny Haynes and Raymond Smith. But ultimately, when you look at the game that Johnny had with Raymond and what we had from Mertz and Mould just now, just goes to show that this group was a lot deeper than people really gave it credit for. And then you've got to give Jamie Kelling credit for the way that he started tonight. 
unpredictable brilliance is exactly what I wanted from this group tonight, and it has delivered. Let's have a look then at the league table because it is absolute chaos at the top. Mercs on mould, both on eight points, both in a very strong position in the group. That is for certain. Raymond Smith now is in a, a precarious position. You say that with a bit of a hush there, Henry, mm. but you're absolutely right. He's in a bit of bother, and the only thing that's really helping him right now is that leg difference of plus five. Kelling and Haynes will play each other in match six. Well, you've got to say, yes, you need to get the six points and one of them will, but that leg difference is glaring right now. It is effectively a winner stays on game in terms of progression. The loser will be eliminated from the process of a game to spare. Yeah, especially when you look at Haynes as minus nine. That has really got to change. But I think when you come to Group B at this stage, you are going to get games which are eliminators in a serial fashion. That one that we've just seen in Game 5. Then number six and seven. We may have this all sorted by game number eight, but then again, we might not. Have you got the abacus ready? Didn't even bring it. Oh, no. Silly. I, I saved it for Saturday. I should have brought it tonight, shouldn't I? Just a couple of extra pages on the notebook then. I'll just bring some extra ink for the pens. Why not? So, game six for us this evening. Sees Johnny Haynes take on Jamie Kenning. He's going to try and find another big pen somewhere in the commentary gantry alongside Glenn Davitt. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, Jamie Kellen against Johnny Haynes, a must win. It's as simple as that. You can have all the abacus in the world, you can have all the numbers in the world, but just looking at the numbers here, and especially with the legs difference right now, the loser this game, it's uh, there's no coming back. Johnny Haynes, that big win in his last game over Raymond Smith. And Jamie Kellen, surprise, I mean, he's played okay, Jamie. It's... It's just been darts here and there, and you know he opened up fantastically well today against Adam Mould. But you know it's just been a first it's been a strange old day. First game and on that loss again to Adam Mould. Probably with a game he felt he could win. I felt it was a 50-50 game going into it. The best thing he can do right now is just keep focusing on forward and you know getting the win across Johnny Haynes. And that's not an easy task to do because Johnny is very very difficult to beat. And Trying to be cock a hoop after beating Raymond Smith in his last game. And already he's back in that treble 20 bed. 140. <coughs> after the positive start for Jamie. 40. I'm sure he was thinking, I've got such a great chance of getting through this. But ultimately, that second game of the night has proven to be quite costly 100. against Adam Mould. And I think the biggest thing for me so far tonight, Dozer, is just looking at how well Adam Mould starts a night. Now, if 91. he gets through, which I'm sure he will in his position, that's the kind of thing that can really stand you a good stay on a Saturday night. Because you play two group games, 81. same format, best Jamie of seven legs. 170. If you can win them both, you're in the semis. I could just shot something in the mix though. Adam Mould this time yesterday was also played 2-1-2. Two, two. And then sort of the uh, the performance dipped after that. I think his job right now is to make sure that doesn't happen again because what a monumental game is coming up next. Adam Mould against Raymond Smith. 60. Adam could Jamie only not only cement his place in the Saturday night, you know, so I've just put pay to Raymond Smith's chances as well. So we're just getting to that stage now where every 88. game means Johnny so much. Johnny require 120. But Shanghai on 20s for Johnny. He's probably done this a thousand times in his life. There's his marker. He just misses the target there. 100. Jamie require 24. Like this, if there's been anything with Jamie, it's just the area of improvement. Game shot on the and first leg. Absolutely delighted Jamie Kelly. on that one. He's actually played well. I'd have to sort of go back and. Probably look at areas where it's just been... Second leg, it's Johnny to throw first. Dart here Game and there, but it's been that type of group. Everyone's beating each other right now. Someone needs to stand up tall and, and get to grips. But when it's three from five, the panic doesn't set in too much. And right now, any player in that player's area would take third place. Or second or first. Anything just to get 60. to Saturday night. But Haynes, you have to say, is the man who's up against it the most with that minus nine leg difference. And you may think that with two 96. games to go, 
that's going to be his Achilles heel. After an amazing week this week from Johnny's putting such 59. an effort. 15 games in the first three days. Then another four. Ultimately, he'll play 23 in a quest to get to Saturday night. 122. But I think he's the man who might get the chop unless he goes a little bit crazy from here. 121. Johnny required 160. You Johnny could classify Hayes. this as crazy. Yes, he's averaging over 100 once again, but still getting beat. And that's sort of... 78. In the story, in the conclusion for Johnny this week. Oh, Jim, it's a long, long way back, and all he can do is put some sort of pressure on. We just give him at least an outside chance. And with Johnny a 140, it does. 82. But 82, we've seen Johnny hit this already this week. You look at the bullseye for 17. And one dart at tops. Game shot on the and second How many line. times, Paul, Johnny have Haynes. I said one dart at tops? So if you're watching, how do you practice? What do I do? Put yourself in them scenarios. So Pretend like you're 3-3 three, three in the local league. Game on. Pretend you're 3-3 three, three in a Super League game. And give yourself finishes where you get one dart or a double. Because once you do it and... 120. You then take that onto the mode of Super Series and put yourself in the positions. Then mentally you think, I've been here before. And I can assure you the doubles then feel a little bit easier. I wonder what new talents we're going to see when Super Series 2 is over. Because we are going to be back after this week. And I look forward to seeing which new talents emerge. Because in Super Series 2, we've unearthed certain talents from the ADC. We've got Adam Mould. We had 60. Adam Warner from the, the ADC. He's the one that stands out for me, Paul. Adam Warner, and he's the one that stands out for me. It's a shame, you know, the, the likes of him and Graham Mush is not here this week, but 100. I've had a sneaky look at next week. Very nice. But it's just going to get bigger and bigger the more the Super Series, and if you ever get that chance, if you ever get that invite, get yourself down here. But we're not going to tell you who's in next week because we're sworn to secrecy. 131. And we don't do early releases here. That was cheeky, Paul. Did you see that fat 11 there? Yes. He's 100. on the hunt for Johnny a fish. Johnny require 170. A very large one. And he might need it. Don't let it go, Johnny. Don't let it go. Bullseye. Oh! What a shot Johnny from Hayes. Johnny Haynes. That was punk style. And look at Jamie Kelling. Oh, boy. Why do people keep doing it to him? Paul Thug, it's Johnny. Incredible shot from Game Haynes. On. Cheeky doubt was that big 11 I said. Shut up, Durant, he said. Have it. That was very apt, considering 28. Henry said at the halfway point we were going to have oranges. Do you remember that old beer advert that Peter Kerr was in? <laughs> he put the oranges to the side, picked up a can and kicked the ball over the fence. And that was the equivalent of that no, shot for Johnny so. Haynes. That was the equivalent of getting the ball and just kicking it so far that it hits the moon. The moment of the night for me. And what's happened 30. since the 170? Let's have a little look. 28 followed by 30. Adrenaline rush. This is why we love darts. 59. You get an adrenaline rush like that, you've got to let it come down a little bit. Even in an atmosphere like this where there's no fans. But I guarantee if you'd have hit that tomorrow night in front of those fans, this 99. place would have erupted. If someone said to you, I struggle to manage my adrenaline rush, what advice? Because mine's a lot simpler than people anticipate I'm going to reply with. 100. I go into the mode of box breathing, which is something that firefighters do. It's four, 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 which is just following a square. So you breathe in for four, breathe out for four, in for four, out for four, and you create this little box. 85. And it allows the adrenaline to dissipate in your system and you allow your heartbeat to come down. It's something that people do in stressful situations to make sure that your oxygen intake is 100. correct. That's something that I tell people. Mine is breathe. I read something fascinating. I'll be very, very quick. But 99. when I was going to the Pro Tours, Jamie knowing I was going to lose, anxiety was setting in. Mentally, you're beaten before you've gotten up there. I tried to pass that across. 
Double 18. Oh, he's left himself on 34 instead. Johnny, you require 100. Well, surely not, Johnny. Come on. Come on, Johnny. I've actually done something just there that I don't like. When I said surely not. Jamie, you require We should have just flipped that around and said, well, surely we want to see that. We want to see a double 17 for Jamie Kelling. Game That's a shot great the shot. Leg. Just Jamie sneaks it Kelly. past to equalize it 2 2. We're having another game here where we can't predict who's going to win leg. it. It's Jamie to throw first. Game on. Kelling is just doing himself so much credit tonight. He is grinding, he's fighting, and he's putting in genuine quality as well of a standard, maybe even better than the week when he qualified. 100. Now, if you want a little bit of a story about the fine margins of qualifying, how about when Matt Clark qualified? He needed to win 4-0 in his final game just to get to Saturday night against Colin Monk. Guess what he did? He won 4-0. I wasn't here that week. That story was told to me by Matthew Edgar earlier today. And what did Matt Clark do today? He's in the finale. If he didn't get that 96. result weeks ago, he wouldn't have even been here this week. What a quality contest. Both just shy of 100 average. 60. These are the Jamie two players who were the bottom. These are the two players where the loser is effectively out. What a game. What a treat they are giving us. What 45. a night of darts it's been, Paul. So the this quality is, has been superb. This is the bottom two, and this is how good this game is. It's a measure of how good this group is, considering these are the people 100. that might not qualify. Jamie requires Double 40. top for the lead for a 13 data. Game it's just incessant, this quality. Jamie he will not give up. And I think he's starting to show that he's got Six some real resilience in that very Game tall on. frame of his. I think he's been... One hundred. And I shouldn't be doing this, but I think even with that third leg going in for Jamie, even with a win, Johnny Haynes can't qualify. It's 41. that leg difference. It was going to... Bite him at some point. Can hear Henry Deacon saying, Glenn, what are you saying? Leave the number crunching to me. 100. We'll figure it out at the end of the match. But if that's the case, the punk has been rocked. But is the yellow submarine still floating? Is it still bobbing around under the surface? Johnny will be feeling rotten right now. But he's been an absolute credit 83. to the Motor Super Series. I had the pleasure of commentating when he won the group. And this week, I just fancied something special would be happening tonight for him. It just hasn't been the case, despite the fact he beat Raymond Smith. 81. But I think he'd be disappointed to find out that he can't go on. So really, now it's over to Jamie Kellen. But the part of integrity and professional in these guys means that every leg they'll be fighting, trying to win. I would fill it up, Johnny. 140. <coughs> Kelly might use the 19s at some point here. Smart. 99. Johnny, you're Are we going to go the distance for the third straight game? Doesn't feel like these games are taking a long time. They're just full of quality. Game Double shot. 12 on the safe leg. found. Johnny and we Hayes. are going the distance again. Another great leg of darts there. Who? will get themselves so the on six it's points. Jamie to throw first. And Game on. at the very best scenario, Kelling can get to six points and minus one. one Superstar from JK. But the problem is everybody else has got better leg differences. And Kelling 60. is already playing his third game of the day. He needs help. But first he must help himself. Boy, is he doing that. What a leg. He's such a nice guy. I mean, he looks clean looking and, you know, the, not the quintessential dar player that is often portrayed in this game. 60. But what you see is what you get with him because he's a, such a nice guy. And that 181.40. And I like that dar, believe it or not. 
What's he doing? He's just keeping it. He's 200 ahead. 65. It's when people start, you know, then chasing that treble 20 and going into the ones and the fives. I didn't mind that first out. 1-1-6 one, one, after nine. It was a beautiful return. 140. Trust me, if Jamie Ricardo, Jamie takes care of this. He definitely wants an Adam Mould victory next to keep Raymond Smith on six points. 60. That's okay. Steady enough. He will come back for a match shot. I fancy a 140. 100. Jamie Ricardo. Now, Jamie, can you finish the job? In another five visit leg. It's a missed single to start. Is it a hit double at the end? 36. Now, Johnny, we've Johnny seen one four ones today from two players. Are you about to make it three? No. Kelling will get another look. A relief from JK. He stands Jamie behind. Do you remember the 20. preparation? And Paul talked about the breathing there. Everything being witnessed. It's double ten. Big dart, big moment, Game and JK is and rolling. Jamie he's Kelly. rolling all the way to the top. He wants to be in the top three, and he's giving himself chances right now. Unfortunately, that's the end. Johnny Haynes will not progress in this Group B. But what a fantastic result that is for Jamie Kelly. 94.86. There was nothing between them. It was an absolute pleasure to commentate. The 170 being the absolute highlight there. Johnny Haynes, you've been absolutely fantastic. Jamie Kellen, you're in the mix. It's over to you, Adam Mould, Raymond Smith. What moments are coming up for the next 10, 15 minutes it is for the Aussie. Do not miss that one.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, a big game at the bottom of the Group B table here at Champions Week. And that really was a seismic victory in our previous match for Jamie Kelling against Johnny Haynes by four legs to three. It now eliminates Haynes from the process for progression through to Champions Night tomorrow evening. It gets complicated now to see who's going to be the three players that go through. Next up for us is Adam Mould against Raymond Smith. And to talk you through all of the scenarios at hand, here's Paul Nicholson and Glenn Davant. Thanks for that, Henry. Really, really appreciate you saying it's so complicated as we go into match number seven. But it is complicated, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Let's put it that way. Adam Mould, who is very much in the fold. In from the cold, and I'm not going to go any further, I promise. <laughs> but if he wins this match, he's going to be safe because he would get himself to double digits on 10 points. Raymond Smith could do with the win just to stop the rot because for the first time in his Mona Super Series career, he's lost two matches in a row. We didn't expect it to happen. Now that it has, it has to stop. Because if it doesn't stop... First leg, it's Adam to throw first. Game on. Things will get very sticky when he plays Alexander Merckx in game 10. I think composure. The big attribute in this game. Not this guy. 100. He'll be buzzing around. No pun intended with a shirt. And there was just something I saw with Raymond, but sort of intrigued to see how he is. In this game, because for the first time, as Paul alluded to, is just questions are now being asked about 60. Raymond Smith. And that heat map around the treble 20 is just widening a little bit. One thing that grabbed my attention yesterday 60. when Adam played his third game is that he just started to show a little bit of frailty in a couple of different ways. One showed a bit more emotion in the way of disappointment with certain visits. 100. And secondly, his follow-through with his third dart started to break down. So we are going to look at that throughout the course of this match. If he can keep it together 60. and do the same kind of things that he did against Alexander Merckx in Game 5 and against Jamie Kelling in Game 3, then his passage to Saturday could be concrete even before... He plays Johnny Haynes. One hundred. Could be a bit of a dead rubber in game nine. Well, tell you what I've noticed, Paul. Uh, Raymond's holding on to his dart a second longer than he has been. Let's see if he's. One hundred and twenty-one. The last thing he wants to do is start overthinking. But as he stands here, he holds it there. And I feel that's longer than it, than it, than it has been. One thing that has changed. It looks like fresh flights to me. And 57. whenever you're having a Adam bad spell, it's not a bad thing to do, actually. Just give yourself a little bit of fresh kit. Six darts and one six, and he'll love that second 100. dart. And all you can do is give yourself a two dart, and he, he, likes to, he likes to motivate himself, and he does that by fist pumping. And we've seen Raymond sort of involved in a game last week, which left a bit 60. of taste in my mouth. I don't require 60. I didn't feel like Raymond done anything wrong, but... Right now, you just get the feeling Adam Mole wants it, but he's the one buzzing around the stage. Double ten. They do look like a couple of wasps. They're both wearing Ponty. black and yellow. Oh, we Roman need now is Scott Williams to referee this game, and we're laughing. I'd rather have Charlie. I don't want to see those silly yellow shoes. What I want to see is a double eleven. One hundred and two. Is it a scare? Adam, you require 20. comes back for 10s. He's not creeping up behind Ray this time. No, he's not. Not at all. I can sense Game a little bit of first trepidation Adam as Adam creeps towards the finishing post. He can't stand still. Second leg, it's Raymond to a throw plain first. plain sight of anxiety. Look at him. He just can't stop moving. 20 darts. And Raymond is dropping low every single dart he's throwing. 100. Until I mention it. <laughs> Should we start talking about the 180 count and that way someone's going to hit one? Oh, well, it didn't work. 
Yes, we've talked Six about cheese. cheese. We've talked about The Simpsons. We've talked about wrestling. And usually a 180 goes in. So what we could do with is some interaction off Twitter because this is stacked right now. Who is going through? If you're Raymond Smith's corner, are you beginning, like me, to panic a little bit for him? Because tonight has certainly not gone as planned. That's for the 180 count tonight. It's really interesting, actually, because Jamie Kelly's got three. He's played three matches. Johnny Haynes got two. He's played three matches. Raymond Smith's got one, which is not a shock, actually, because he hasn't got a lot this week. 97. Alexander Merckx has got two in the group. One tonight and one yesterday. But Mould, he's got seven tonight. Three in his first game. Four in his next game. 60. He's a bit of a Rangers sneaky one. He's this 100. guy, isn't he? 64. He's a character. I think I like him. I think he'd be great for Saturday night. And I think if he'll engage with the crowd, and I think that would be good for him. He may look a treble. 100. 18 at that point. But he's still in the 20 bed to leave a, a nice 64 finish. And for Mould, two trebles is a minimum right now. So it's advantage Smith. 58. And already Mould will Raymond be thinking 64. of leg three. He should be, because this one should be done maybe in three. 48. They were going a lot easier earlier in the week, and you can see mm. the micro frustration from the guru. He's getting a bit ticked off by the fact <laughs> that he's not disposing of legs 59. with ease. Roman requires 16. Can't miss this time. Can't give Adam a shot at that one, two, four, which you missed in the last leg. And he does That's well leg. done. Raymond Smith. He's not going to maintain averages like he did last night. Then he's going to have to Third get a little bit gritty in the final two Game matches on. in this group. Now, that leads me to what he did yesterday. Because his running average yesterday 100. was the most impressive daily average of the week in any group. 97.54. That is of a very, very high standard. And you wonder why we talk about his possibilities 91. of going far in this game so much. Because only elite players can do that. No, it's only four games. But all week long, he's averaging nearly 93. 85. If you did that on the Pro Tour, you'd be causing a lot of people problems. And when you go to the Pro Tour, Glenn, you know this more than most. Your averages are inflated because the quality around you gives you less chances One to score lesser shots. And as you looked at me there, I thought this was going to be a 180 every day of the week. And they don't come an awful lot from Raymond Smith. If there's one area of his game he can improve on sort of tomorrow 60. night, if he qualifies, this is his monster scoring because, I mean, the guy has got everything. But right now, Adam Mould will be thinking, I've got chances here. This guy will be thinking he's dropping low. He's not hitting them 97 60. averages for fun like he has been all week. I mean, the guy's got 109 average in him. But right now, he's not at his best, and you have to capitalise because you don't always get these chances. Roman this to is what's worrying me right now. Adam Mould, a couple of legs in, is only averaging 77. This is where he tailed off yesterday. It's happening again. He's tailed off, but he's... If he can sneak this leg, which is second favourite now, after that 1 3 4. But you'd always look for a spark. Come on, he says. I like his passion. Passion is a. Passion is just the equivalent of natural talent. It's how you manage that. If you've got work ethic and passion and desire, 100. And you dream big. To require 36. You can make it to the very top. Double 18 for the lead with a break of throw. Tricky switch. Wow. What a marker. Oh, Amazing. you're kidding me. Did Adam he really find that 56. gap? That is just how he's rolling tonight. He's finding gaps that people can't even see. And Mould can pounce. And Game does. On the third wow, wow. what Mould. an exchange that was. What's going on here, Paul? Tell me. It's just weird. He misses the double 18, oh, then he sneaks a first. lovely guide on the double nine, finds the gap, and Mould pounces on 56. 
And look where that first dart's gone. He's averaging 79 mil and leading 2 1. Yeoman's averaging in the 90s. Did somebody see a black cat go past Raymond Smith at any point this evening? Because 57. It seems to me like somebody's out to get him. Lady Luck has not turned up for this guy who has traversed the planet to be here. And he's exactly 81. the opposite to someone like Scott Walters, who takes maybe 30 minutes to get here. It'll take the thick end of 30 hours for Raymond to get here. 100. He took that gamble. Whatever his flight cost him, he felt it was good value for money because you know, he probably felt he was the star man. 60. The bookies had him favourite, but right now, right now, I am beginning to doubt for the first time, Paul, this week. Adam Moll's just having fun. 58. He's sticking his tongue out. He's bouncing around. He's buzzing like his shirt. And that man is just a face of steely determination. But I tell you what, it also reps it represents a little bit of frustration right now. 100. What a last dart that is. I think, because of the reasons you just mentioned, maybe there's more pressure on Raymond Smith than anybody else. Because he's got more expenses to get here. 125. He's paid more Raymond, you require just to turn up. And he's had the tag of favourite as well. That might be a good guide for him. Because a lot of the time when he's playing well, he can find that second dart. 56. Well, Adam, you require he's left 64 instead of staying straight on the 20s. We'll find out if that's a prudent play. Because Mould is going for 3-1. On a big, big shot. Paul did ask me earlier, what's the best 1 6 1 you've ever seen? Raymond, you require I thought I had 64. my line ready for that finish there. What a moment this is. 64. I'm beginning to see beads of sweat on the head of Raymond Smith there. This is a huge dart. 32. There's two of those. That's two misses on 64s in this I game. It would be so ironic. If Mould finds that number now for a 3 1 lead. I think ironic is the word I was searching for because you just you just know this is going in. Game you shot the That is going in because Adam the whole Mould. night Raymond Smith is having right now is just typified in them two darts right there. This is an incredible turnaround. Fifth leg, it's Adam to throw first. That was incredible. Big, that was a Game big on. smile from Adam right there. I think that shot gave him a lot of joy. He's one leg away from qualification. As it stands... What does this mean, Paul, now? As it stands... 100. Adam Mould is one leg away from 10 points. And going top on leg difference as well. Turning things around with Raymond Smith. If he loses 4-1, the Aussie, he will go to 60. plus two, which is where Adam is now. But the most important thing is that he would be within reach for Jamie Kelling. Kelling is very much in the fold. 81. If Adam can do him a favour here in leg number five. Am I right? Adam Mould wins this game. Ten points he's through. He's fine. He'll be fine if he gets one more leg. It's not about leg difference for him. It's about points. Ten 60. points with the majority of the players having only one game left. He'll be out of sight with a game to spare. And he's going for the throat. 140. And Jamie Kellen has got his scarf out. Come on, you mould. Unbelievable. And I'm sorry for harping on. Why am I harping on? Because since Wednesday, when I arrived, it's Raymond Smith this, Raymond Smith that. Not once did I think we'd be going through this on Friday night. 123. It's not over yet. He's still got one game against Alexander Merckx in game 10, but that's a ropey, ropey thing to do. Especially when you consider the way that he finished his campaign yesterday. He hasn't lost since he played Raymond last. 60. Well, I beg your pardon, he did lose to Adam Mould, didn't he? I'm getting carried away. It's not the first time. He needs two trebles. There's one. And I'm telling 100. you, he threw them dashes a little bit quicker, and I think that suited him. That hold he's got right now, the hold on Mould, 
for double top and for an extraordinary match. Game, and in a game, he was second Adam best Mold. for an awful lot of big periods in there. Adam Mould we're going to see on Saturday night, and that is fantastic news. He's a character. I think he's just realised what he's achieved there. For Raymond Smith, what a story brewing here at Motor Super Series. He's travelled halfway around the world to be here. Massive commitment. And right now, as could the headlines could be tomorrow, how from top of the table to not qualifying, that would be unheard of a couple of hours ago. But that is the scenario we have right now because Jamie Kellen is right in the mix. But the moment is all about the ADC qualifier, Adam Mould. Tip my hat off to you, sir, and we'll see you tomorrow night. And next up, the return of Alexander Merckx against Jamie Kellen. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where the drama continues to hot up here in Group B. Adam Mould is into Champions Night tomorrow. The ADC qualifier is there following a 4-1 victory against Raymond Smith in our last game. Alexander Mertz can join him at Champions Night if he can get the better of Jamie Kenning in our next match if JK comes out the winner. Well, we're going to have to find another page in that notepad of Paul Nicholson's and Glenn Delvance. Thanks, Henry. We've just been trying to work out there and we said, look, let's get this game out the way and I think we'll be able to work it out a little bit easier then. But, yeah, the situation, let's make it very simple. If Jamie Kellen loses here, then it's... Uh, well, I can't see a scenario where Raymond Smith then doesn't go through, but you could be looking at connotations of 4-3s and 4 nils, etc. So sit back and enjoy. The highlight of this one would be a Jamie Kellen win because then we are on, like, fingers, toes and everything. But what a group what a story so far 
First and Adam Mould, the ADC qualifier. First. Game on. A partnership between the ADC and Motor Super Series to give opportunities to players who don't travel the circuit too much. Probably got full-time jobs and found it difficult to go and do the WDF or the, to go through the Q school. Well, the ADC is giving people opportunities to play for uh, massive prizes. And Adam Mould will be representing the ADC tomorrow for £20,000. Indeed he will be. And... More big PDs may be coming his way because if you're not fully aware, just by getting to Saturday night, £1,250 is guaranteed. Make the semi finals £3,750. Get to the final. One hundred. Win it, 20 And let's not forget, because we have had a lot of quality here over the last few days. You get a nine daughter this week. It's an extra bag of sand. A thousand pounds in old money. He's at it again, Alexander Mertz. <laughs> just he just too, hasn't had enough, has he? Too quick for even for the cameraman. Incredible stuff. We'll get down to the nitty gritty at the end of this leg because it could be about to happen Alexander, in as little as one dot. 36. I don't have confidence Game as much when he's got only the one dab, but what's on the Mertz? Has somebody taken this guy by the shoulders and given him a shake? Because at the start of this Second year, he didn't play that well. He on. played awfully at the Challenge Tour. He and never won a game, did he? Since he came here, it's like he's snapped back into the Alexander Merckx that won here 60. about 10 weeks ago. But, right, let's talk about it then. Jamie Kelling loses this match. It'll just be a question maybe for Raymond Smith to win a certain amount of legs against Alexander in game 10. But if Jamie wins 85. over to Raymond Smith, who will then have to beat Alexander Mertz. And I said 100. many, many times with pride for Raymond Smith that he'd never lost two games in a row in all of the time he's played here. Now he's lost 96. three in a row. That's how seismic it is. Paul, could he lose four in a row and still qualify? Good. 43. It depends Jamie on what Kelly happens with Jamie. Here. And then what happens tomorrow night? He plays like the Raymond Smith we all know. This is just unbelievable. 43. He was forced to go for the 60 there. But remember, Jamie, in that spot, you could have gone for the bullseye. It would have left a 170. Oh. 140. He's in that 140 column again. And Merckx is just... Putting everyone to the sword. 177 would be nice here. 139. Alexander, you require 84. Two dark combination. But we may see the bull come into fruition. 39. How fast is this Jamie game? Requires 78. It's like they're playing in fast forward compared to what we saw this afternoon. <laughs> Double top. Now. 58. Had trials Ooh, and tribulations on tops, and Merck, who loves double 16, is going for it just now and hey, takes it immediately for a 2 0 lead. Alexander Jamie Merck. Kelling is in super trouble. Do you remember Benny Hill? <laughs> yeah. It's like these are running around. I keep like just want to put the mass on of uh, Mac Clark and Messrs. Uh, the others, but that uh, yeah, was a great group. Group C. 91. Joking aside. Yeah, commiserations to Colin Osborne, who Butted. failed at the final hurdle, but congratulations to Scott Walters 41. and to Matt Clark, who was safe with the game to spare. Tell you what, with the confidence of Scott Walters, he is 92. going to be so dangerous tomorrow night. That'll be a story. And he's he was bringing people with him, Paul, as well, so absolutely first class. I can't wait to... 85. Didn't know a great deal about him. I do now. I didn't know an awful lot about this guy. 140. He's playing at a level this week that I didn't think he was going to. He yeah. is whatever he's done between the challenge tour and 100. And here he must have put in a lot of work. Maybe just I've just thought of something actually. Maybe being in his own little bubble in that practice room with four English speaking players and he can just do his own thing. Instead of being distracted by other Dutchmen, this might suit him. Because so far, he can do no wrong. 
I think Raymond James Smith will be talking to him after mode. this, Paul. That's Alexander for sure. Alexander Merckx. Because I'm telling you, it's looking like a scenario right now that Raymond Smith is going to qualify without having to win a game. Fourth leg, it's Jamie to throw first. Right game now, on. Jamie Kelling is thinking, this guy can go and do one. He is ruining my Friday. Well, it's actually Saturday morning now. So he's already ruining his weekend. It's like having one 100. of those rose thorns in your sock when you're on a long walk and you think, well, get out of my shoe. He's being annoying. 88. He's playing outstanding and the averages tell the absolute tale here because Jamie Kelly's not playing too bad. 60. In fact, in this group, Jamie's played really well. He averaged 87 high yesterday, 87.76. He had five maximums, and he played some great stuff. In fact, he's played better this evening than he did yesterday, and he still might come up short. 40. There is a word on the flights of Alexander the Great, and I have been waiting for the time to talk about it. And it's a very strong word as well. 140. It says victory. Victory might be his. Should use the ball. 90. Jamie requires 61. Jamie he doesn't want the ball. the ball. That's all right. He's got his choice now. Double top. Game shot. Very good. Jamie Kellen. In six minutes, four legs played. It takes me six minutes to throw three darts before Pick you say anything, Paul. Well. That is really, first. really quick. That's up there with Grey Musher territory. 96. He's completed four legs in, an, in under six minutes before. <laughs> in fact, I'm just going to have a little bit of a nod to Grey Musher. Well, we've got the time 57. because, for me, the greatest performance ever since we started over 8,000 matches ago. 85. Came from Graham Musher, where he won 4-2 in a match. He had four ton-plus finishes, an average in excess of 110. 100. And a nine data in the same match. I'm not sure that anybody will ever top that, quite frankly. Steady down. 140. I think one of his finishes was a 167. <laughs> it was just mesmeric. Bit like 100. what Alexander Merckx is doing right now. Jamie just can't seem to get near this guy. And Jamie has to get to three 58. legs. If he has any any hope of uh, Raymond Smith losing four nil and staying in this contest, so one hundred and four. I think you might have heard me there. The one two two is usually on the eighteens. He'll stay there for double seven. Game and just shots. an incredible and match. match. And what Alexander a finish. Marks. His finishing tonight has been absolutely sublime. 1-4-8 earlier. 1-2-2 two, two there. When the guy's got three darts in a hand at a 100-plus finish, I think he totally understands where he's at right now. He knows he's there on Saturday night. And with finishing like that, who's to say, look, the average is there. 90.22 for Jamie, 50%. If you'd asked him beforehand, he'll say, yes, I'll take that. 99.72 from Alexander Merck. 66.6% .6 average on the checkout, 122, that standout finish at the end. Alexander Merckx will see you tomorrow night. This league table is beginning to take its final conclusions. But next up, Johnny Haynes, Adam Mould.
This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series Champions Week, where we now know the identity of all six finalists that are going to be playing for the £20,000 top prize come this time tomorrow evening, because a 4-1 victory for Alexander Merckx against Jamie Kelling has set in stone the Super Six, and so now we know who will be playing at Champions Night tomorrow. Next up for us is Johnny Haynes up against Adam Mould, and Glenn Dowant, Paul Nicholson, put the abacus away. Thanks, Henry. It has been thrust away from the desk into the backpack and the by rows are away as well. We will keep some tabs on the league table because Adam Mould has got one more job to do and that's to top this group. Indeed, if he is to do so, he needs to beat Johnny Haynes and he needs a little bit of a favour from Raymond Smith who is going to play Alexander Merckx next and may just be shaking his hand right now because he's just done him a big, big favour. I'm not so sure, 100% sure, because I've just uh, just sort of walked through the players' area there. First I'm not 100% certain to throw first. that they Game know on. the confirmation of the three players going through tonight. Part of me felt that Jamie Kellen is hoping Alexander Merckx will do Raymond's, uh, do, do uh, Jamie Kellen a favour. Uh, I might 100. be wrong. Um, but yeah, the excitement of... Uh, going down to the final game of the night sort of being taken away from us. But I just think, I just think it's a better final with Raymond Smith in it. And yeah, Alexander Merckx has been just classy. Adam Mould has been outstanding. And the two players, the guy in your picture there, Johnny Haynes and Raymond Smith were my two choices to comfortably fall, get through. Not so for the punk. So... I think the practice room is going to be sans punk music on Saturday night, which for some of them is a good thing, but not for Johnny Haynes fans and for some of his friends who will play tomorrow night. 42. It has been a pleasure having him here this week. It's been great to see him, but ultimately he's come up short. But this guy is doing the ADC a lot of credit. Wow, so this game's in the infancy, Paul. 93. Let's dissect a little bit tomorrow night. What are, your, what are your early thoughts on? Not necessarily a win. I don't think it's fair to ask you to win yet because I know, like myself, we like to look at numbers. 97. I am, at this early stage, very confused. I look at the 180s from Ballsy. Scott Walters. Johnny I look at the up and down week of Raymond Smith. I look at Adam Mould, who's now a threat. I don't want to forget about Matt Clark, and I'm definitely not thinking 82. that Jim McEwen's going to be too flummoxed by it. He's going to be fresh, fresher than anybody. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Fresh or match fit, you know, them a couple of days off. But yeah, that's totally Johnny what you're saying 40. there. Which tops for Johnny. Game shot on the first leg. Johnny Haynes. I wonder if you wonder what the shake of the head there is. Clearly, obviously, he knows he can't go any further, but the frustration will be there. Second leg, it's Adam to throw Professionalism first. and integrity. And he, he knows that he had the game to get through this group. I mean, three from five, I think he probably felt confident he was going to get through. But uh, 93. Up north, we say Adam Mould is cock a hoop right now because it's going to be his biggest night in darts tomorrow night. And the atmosphere is going to be absolutely wicked in here. I can't wait. 100. And, uh, yeah, I'm even wearing a jacket tomorrow, Paul. Yeah, I might even wear one myself. And what would our friend Stoddart say? Graham Stoddart, one of the most well-recognised and likeable dart players from the northeast of England over the last 30 years, he would say, as far as Adam Mould is concerned, the last couple of days have been tickety-boo. And if you take it a step further, he's got this saying called, sound as a fish cake, which I've never really understood, but 
typically Graham Stoddart. And they come from Stoddy at a great. Yeah, the Scott North East, Scott, Scott Hunt, Adam Hunt's brother, sort of taken over because it was a couple of years ago, certainly when I was playing local competitions. 55. 2011, 2010, Stoddart would run a calendar and woe be tired if anyone put a competition on where there was already one agreed. Never mind if it was in concert, Northumberland or in Cleveland, it was one competition and sometimes... Some a, a Boxing Day, Paul. Honestly, I think there's about nine competitions to choose from in the northeast. It's always been a bustling time 60. to be a dart player in the northeast. And right now, the area where these two are from, whether it's Oxfordshire, Wiltshire, Buckinghamshire, they're all bordering counties. 26. There's a lot of stuff going on right there as well. That's one of the reasons why Mouldy is here. When I was winning the Cleveland competitions, 60. we had a Teesside Open and some really influential dart players sort of turned up from absolutely out the blue. The shock when they walked in. Shut out the blue. Who do you think walked into the Eston Open in 2010? Johnny Require, 126. I'm going to go for Ronnie Baxter. Very close, yeah. I mean, it was a, a few guys, Gary Weldon and all, but Paul Lim. Because he was doing some work 98. trying to get you know, the uh, soft tip boards ah, in the yeah. northeast. Walked in with study. Interesting. Double eight. The one one. Twenty two. Johnny can stretch his Johnny lead to two. Johnny required twenty eight. I know that is already through, Paul. But yesterday he sort of came out the traps very very quickly and petered off at the end. He's definitely been worse Game in the, the second, second part line. of the event. Johnny Haynes. Would that be a concern for him for tomorrow night? I think it seems to me that yesterday he faltered after first. two. Game on. He's been better tonight. If he falters after three here, he will take that into consideration as long as he doesn't falter 60. after four tomorrow. I mean, his mind might be on tomorrow night already and just get me off this stage, but... It's always a confidence boost when you're beating people like Johnny Haynes and going four out of four on the night. That's a, a possibility for him. <laughs> Absolutely. Three from three already. And against this kind of field, he's got to feel good about that. And there was always going to be a big opportunity for somebody 60. in this group to make a name for themselves. Merckx through. Smith through. Mould through. And... The identity 140. of the finals night is not the way that I thought it would be, actually. It's got a very different identity. I think the one thing we missed off that I wanted to say for 81. tomorrow night, we've got that mixture of speedy, quick players. That last game was an absolute pleasure to watch. And also we've got some wily old characters who, uh, if you weren't watching this afternoon with us, it'll be tough to beat them. One of the strongest players ever to play in the Motor Super Series, Jim McEwen as well. They are tough players to beat. They're only to outscore them. But also the fact that you probably stood behind them. Adam Mould, who's Adam, you at the ankles tonight. He'll be waiting a long time for Matt Clark to move on. Double 18. 103. He'll be back. Just like Arnie was in Terminator 2. Over 30 years ago. You feel old now because I do. Bit wrong to say I've never watched it. 59. Get out. Adam, you require 18. I'm not talking to you anymore. Yeah, I'm down to about 10 films as he looks at double nine. Game shot on the third double line. It's been regularly Adam hit tonight. Mold. I think one of memory I had, he was just off the wire on the last match and he pinged a double nine, which is a real turning Both point for him. I guess Adam's to throw first. Game which on. Again, it's now back on throw, but yeah, sorry, Paul. It's... Getting conversation from me on uh, films is a bit of a bit of a nightmare. I, I think there's a movie you'd really like. Uh, it, I think Chris Doby told me about it. You should watch a movie called Goal. Does yeah, it, I think yeah, I think you need a sick bucket if you watch it because it's involving 100. Newcastle United. David Beckham's in it, so is Zinedine Zidane and Raúl. That'll be the team that Newcastle have next year. I hope it's not Raúl. He's retired. Well, it's Beckham, but. You never know what they with this Saudi money, you know what I mean? I have to laugh when uh, Dobie's uh, tagging people like James Madison, people like that. And then I, I look and James Madison's reply, and I say, he wins one Premier League, and, and all the Premier League players are now chatting to him. It's just not fair no more, Paul. 
It was better when I was in 55. control of that argument. I'll let you handle that with Chris, actually. I'm staying out of it. Daily basis. I'm, I'm not going to mediate, even. Let's move on to a Twitter question, shall we? At the middle part of this match. We've had a tweet 100. from Leslie, who is asking myself and yourself, Glenn, what's the latest time you've had to play a professional match during your career? For me, it actually was against Ronnie Baxter in the Grand Prix. 81. It was after midnight. And it was best of three sets. I'm very glad to say that I won that match by two sets to nil to set up a game with Phil Taylor in the second round, which I lost. But 100. that was a very late match. It was a long session, and I was playing eighth game. I don't know if Les was with me. Obviously, Les is a good friend of mine, but mine's in the Finder Masters. Uh, obviously, uh, Dutch were an hour ahead of us, and I was last 100. against Jim Williams. Johnny, you require 160. Averages were shocking. The throw was so long, but Jim was like, you're looking for excuses. Johnny looks at 116 here. Game shot on the four play. So how many Johnny times Hayes. have we seen that finish this week? One, one, two, and one, one, six. And anyway, I just was always good hand eye. I said, "There's something wrong with this." Fifth leg, it's Johnny to throw and first. Then we got an apology the next day. So it was four inches too long. Oops. I'm not going to name the player, but there's a funny story to do with. One hundred and four. Place called Sindelfingen in Germany, just outside of Stuttgart. We played an entire session on the European tour around. Eight, nine years ago. And at the end of the session, the player approached the tournament director and said, that board is low. Get it fixed. It just so happened that that person won that afternoon. 58. Went away. They went and checked the board. The board was actually high. <laughs> Quite funny, actually, when you think about it. But I'm not going to name names. 45. Have you had a practice in the house yet? Or board, the accommodation that we're yeah, staying in. Yeah, that, about that, it. that board's high. I'll let you uh, hammer that out with our landlord. 76. I think that board's great. Spot on. <laughs> this one on the stage is really good. I can testify to that because I've played on it. And every high 70s average that I had up there is because I wasn't very good. Having said that, Johnny Haynes has been pretty good in this game. Can you let me that high 70 average for next week, please? Might need more than that against Mark Dubridge. 99. He played some pretty good stuff here when he was here in week 12 yeah. of Super Series 1. So I hear average 91 for the day one day, didn't he? Yeah, but that was about three months ago. 100. Johnny, you require 128. For the win, 128. The punk needs 60 in bull. Bullseye to finish his week. 103. That close Adam, to saying goodbye 91. with a bit of a bit of a flourish. Down for double 17, and now Johnny Haynes has another chance. I think Mould has just seen the adrenaline leave his body over the last 51. four and a bit legs. Johnny, you require 25. Who is leaving us potentially after this? Goes for double four again. And Game there it is. Shot and the it's match. a parting shot Johnny for the Haynes. punk. And he will leave Champions Week with a victory by four legs to one over Adam Mould. As far as Adam's concerned, he can now turn his attention to later on on Saturday night. He will return to see us in around about 19 hours' time. See you then, Mouldy. Looking forward to it. As for Johnny Haynes, that was a decent performance, wasn't it? Let's have a look at the stats from that one, if we can. Over to you guys. Can we see the stats? There they are. 85.18, and the doubles were really good, weren't they? 67%. And another one of those 116 checkouts for our collection for Champions Week. One game to go, and it is between Raymond Smith and Alexander Merckx. Both are qualified, and Raymond is very happy with Alexander. We'll talk about that when we come back.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. You are watching Champions Week and all is done as far as confirming positions in Group B is concerned. After a 4-1 win for Johnny Haynes against Adam Mould, it means that Alexander Merckx is going to be the group winner. Adam Mould in second place and Raymond Smith qualifies third through Group B. Two of the three players who we're going to see tomorrow night from this group go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the final game of it is Raymond Smith up against Alexander Merckx. And so for one final time in the group phase ahead of Champions Night here at Champions Week, let's rejoin Paul and Glenn. Yes, just like Mills Lee and Henry, let's get it on. Game number 10. And there are 10 games remaining for the week because this guy has been motoring along and he has won the group because of that victory for Johnny Haynes over Adam Mould by four legs to one. It means that Alexander is the Group B winner in Champions Week. So congratulations to Alexander for that. First leg, it's Raymond to throw first. And Game on. That guy shaking his hand might owe him a drink because by virtue of qualifying for Saturday night, even though he hasn't won a match tonight, He's guaranteed £1,250, and at the very worst for him and Smith, 60. that'll probably cover his flight. I wonder how many players, Paul, have lost all four games 60. on the Friday night and still qualified through Group B. But that could be the potential scenario for the man in your picture. <sighs> 59. This guy's been absolutely sensational. Really pleased for him. And honestly, Paul, soon as after that game, barnstorm of a game of Jamie Kellen. I, I left the commentary box for a minute and just walked through what happened. Alexander went into the corner of his room, put his dart, picked them back up, and was straight back on the practice board. I don't think he's engaged an awful 60. lot with the rest of the guys. He doesn't like to sit and rest on his laurels. He just feels like he needs to keep his bones and his body moving. 55. So he's probably thrown a couple of thousand darts even before he getting on that stage tonight, but it works for him. Like I said earlier, I do believe that this is working for him. In a week where he could possibly be, have 100. other Dutch players here like Willem Mandegas or Chris Landman or some others like Moreno Blom. 140. You might get frustrated by being distracted. Sometimes when you're the oddity in a practice room, you can just go into your own little bubble and do your own thing. And I have a funny feeling that 100. we might have found Alexander the strength in Alexander the Great, and that is being a lone wolf. Now, if that's going to happen Remington again tomorrow, he might be somebody you might want to have a little flutter on. Good first start for Raymond, who can start to relax as he goes for the bullseye. He didn't even look at that treble 18 there. Alexander, he had more of his eye on the double, six, double 18, which would have left double 16. Oh, two double eighteens just yeah, sums away his finishing line. goals right now. Alexander Murray. Just forget from 5 or 1 to a 200. And then just get your darts out, your finishing boots, and just go for it there. It's absolutely Second leg, staggering. It's if you, to throw first. you haven't been with us tonight, are you? Just catching the last game with us. The finishing from Alexander Merckx has been A+. plus. He's been doing a bit of a Easy clinic five. when it comes to eye-catching finishes. 1-4-1 one, one on double 12. 1-4-8 on double 14. 122 on double 7. And now he's got a double-double. For a 92, this guy can finish. And he's in good form. You know, two, I say good form. In 2022, he won two WDF Opens. Never easy to win. He said he had a half decent Q school, some decent results there. But uh, in preparation of coming here this week, he went to Q school and played five times and lost five times. So, that could be his concerns. But he's just been absolutely fantastic. If there's one area to improve on, it's what 100. Raymond just done there. He's only hit two 180s this week. Uh, so that's an area, but, you know, why worry about 180s when you can finish like he can? Now, Raymond has got this bonus match before all of the finalists come back at around 7 o'clock come Saturday night, which isn't that far away now. That check. 100. Not Raymond, you're going to be 60. Written, but he can use this game 
as a bit of a sighter to find out what he needs to put right between now and then. Game shot on the That'll second do. leg. Raymond Smith. First dart wasn't great. He would admit that. It was very low. But the second one, spot Third on. Leg, it's Raymond he's to throw straight first. back. Game on. Do you think he's aware of the situation? Do you think word's got to him that he knows he's through? Oh, I he's would not hope so. showing any sign of distress or anything. He's definitely better playing a little bit 120. quicker. 120. He was holding on and holding on, even to a stage where I thought the... I thought we were on pause. But if you just watch him as he approaches 59. the board here, just this element, just, just this part of the process there, he was just holding it, holding it, holding it. And he was dropping low, just like that one. But this looks like a lot smoother. Another dropping low gain here. 60. But replication, honestly, each time he throws a dart, when he gets it right, he's still a big hitter for tomorrow night, Paul, 59. in my opinion. I wonder if that word on those flights for Alexander is a bit of an omen. I think a lot of people will be having their 10 pence on certain people. 60. And maybe some people have got slips on Raymond Smith from earlier in the week. That's some short odds. 58. I'll be fascinated to see what he will be to win come Saturday evening. Now, if you do want some tips, Glenn will be with everybody on Sporty Stuff TV from 8.25 on Saturday night. I do apologise for tonight. I've been quite good so far. I want me listening to listen to Stefan if you're listening, Raymond Stefan. Raymond, you 121. Has the stuffing been knocked out of Merckx now that he knows his fate of being the Group A winner? Sorry, Group B. There have been so many groups this week. So many great darts. We'll go over the 100 mark for matches 95. for the week Raymond a little bit later on. 24. But it's double 12 for the halfway point for a first victory of the night. He's setting new trends. I think you know him more than anybody. How will he reflect on getting 18. through the Saturday night? First Alexander, of all, you the require 130. Philosophically, I think, I think sometimes in this format you are allowed a lull. 58. He has ridden his luck at Ranger times this week. Ranger requires six. But he has also been the recipient of a lot of really good darts against him. He's taken a lot of shots on the chin, and he will feel better for it come Saturday night. Game He'll be battle hard, and he's now Raymond got the lead. Smith. He is at the halfway point, and I do sense that maybe if he does get that win leg, it's against Merckx here Game on. for a second successive win against him, in fact, it will be good for his chances for Saturday night. But there's a one seven four start from Merckx. Yeah, that's just the one aspect of Merckx's game. I think he'll go away very happy to be group winner. I mean, what more do you need to do? But what areas can you try and maximise your potential? Well, I just think his scoring could be a bit better, but he gets anywhere near the startling statistics on some of his finishing this week. It gives him real opportunities tomorrow night, no matter what happens. I see the real problem 39. for these two potentially on Saturday night being Scott Walters because of his 180s. Let you cast your mind back. It wasn't that far ago that we saw 30 maximums. Oh, well, there's 60 on the floor. That was 51% dart and 49% sizal. But 31 80s in 10 games from Walters this week. If he continues to do that on 100. Saturday night, he's going to get more chances than anybody. And if you consider his ratio of three on average per game, if he does that in the qualifying matches in the groups. Six He's going to get enough chances to get through to the semi-finals. Here's another question, Paul. Impact of the crowd tomorrow night. So you've got the focus of there of Raymond Smith. 58. Against the bounciness of Adam Mould we've seen tonight. Does the crowd play a part tomorrow? Unquestionably, because they have in the past. This guy will be outnumbered because there won't be many Aussies here. 49. I don't think there's going to be any Dutch people here supporting Alexander Merckx, but there'll be plenty of people supporting Mould. And supporting Walters. 44. And then you got Scotland's Jim McEwen and Kent's Matt Clark. I think the two home 
players are going to get a lot of favouritism. 132. Alexander, you require 86. 86. For 2-2. Two, two. It's the bull. Well, that's a good leave. Raymond, you require but Raymond Smith 40. is on tops to get to 3-1. Game shot on the fourth leg. No bother. Raven Smith. Well, there's a saying in Australia. They say, not happy Jan when something Fifth bad leg. happens. It's Raymond to throw first. Game on. But then again, right now, that's Bonza. This is so much better now from Raymond Smith. 100. 3-1. I just feel like he needed to go to bed on a positive tonight. It's going to be a huge now, but everybody starts on zero 60. tomorrow, and the atmosphere is going to be totally different. Please don't miss it. Uh, the tune in on Sporty Stuff TV, or the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, or even better, come and join us in Portsmouth at the Live Lounge. Ticket to absolutely 60. free at dartshop.tv. Come and make it the amazing night it deserves. £20,000. One of these, potentially 100. one of these two players. It's going to take back to either Holland or Australia. This is the biggest amateur prize out there right now. Over £1.17 million pounds have been paid out by more than Super Series this year. It's only getting bigger and better. Some of the players that we'll have in 2023 will whet the appetite of any competition. 84. As we come to the conclusion of this match, certainly after that dart, that's the dart where he's at his best. And look at the pace of the throw there. It's definitely just a little bit quicker. And that leaves 62 for Alexander Merckx. Steady Eddie Merckx has had his moment, you feel. 57. But he's got Raymond to be absolutely 62. delighted to top the group because that's your only objective when you step on that hockey. There's Raymond. For the match, double 16. 30. No time to panic just yet. Because Alexander the Great is not so great in this match. Well, like 100. I said, we'll take away a lot, lot of positives. So it's been a tremendous week. But it's Raymond Smith, the tournament favourite at the beginning of the week. Just getting a little bit aggrieved because he set Game himself shot. such high expectations. It was Smith. a tough, tough night for the Aussie. He'll be absolutely delighted to get over the line on that one. But Alexander Merckx, he tops the group. What a couple of days for him and his experience moving forward. A real tough match. Match play at its finest, but Raymond Smith showed the quality to come through 4-1. 36% on the uh, checkout average there, the standout. So it's Raymond Smith we're going to see. The ADC represented Adam Mould we're going to see. And group winner, Alexander Merckx. Kudos to Alexander. Over to you, Henry. Glenn, thank you very much indeed. Paul Nicholson joining me up here on the balcony. Raymond Smith through, but he made it much harder work than perhaps many would have expected. If you're going to have a sticky wicket, do it in qualifying when you still get through. I think he knows he's a bit of a lucky boy this evening, but that last game there, you just got to admire his professionalism. I'm sure he knew what the crack was before <laughs> that fourth game of the night, but... I think getting a win and not going into Saturday night with that big fat zero over his daily total is a big thing for him. I think he's going in with a win and will now try and put it right on Saturday during the day to make sure he's got the best possible chance of getting that £20,000 check. But full credit to Mertz. I didn't expect him to win the group, but he has. I was going to say, full credit has to go to him. Perhaps we were speaking about Haynes, we were speaking about Raymond Smith before this group got underway. Mm. We weren't talking so much about Alexander Merckx, but the group that he won, the week he won week two, involved the likes of Neil Duff, Graham Hall, who's subsequently gone on to win a tour card. So mm. he's proved time and time again, put him in tough groups, he will still come out the other side. Even after qualifying 10 weeks ago, he came into this well under the radar. And I think now that is completely shot because he has to be a threat. When you win a group like that, which has had some good professionalism in that practice room, there's been no nastiness, no controversy. It's all been about Merckx just being in his own bubble. And because of the language barrier between him being Dutch and the others being English speaking, I really do think that's helped him. And I think it might help him again on Saturday night. If he goes into that bubble and plays and hits those kind of finishes again, I, th I see him getting out of his group. 
I think he will be a threat. Let's have a look then and see how the table finishes up in Group B because, as you say, Alexander Burke's winning it. But Adam Mould, the ADC qualifier who won the first week since the turn of the year, this is becoming somewhat of a fairy tale for him. It is, but this is what it's all about, isn't it? That when the Moda Super Series decided to have a partnership with the ADC, one of the reasons they did that was to try and unearth talents that people didn't know a great deal about. Now, in the Aylesbury area where Adam is from and around Milton Keynes, a lot of people know of Adam's talent and maybe have done for three or four years. But now what the ADC is doing is that they're shoveling these talents towards us so they can get exposure right here to cast the net a little bit wider. This is just the first drop in the ocean because it's about to get really interesting over the next 10 to 12 weeks. And we're even going global mm. with the ADC when it comes to early May. Talking about interesting, do you want to have a little look at the groups for tomorrow night? Yeah, definitely. I want to see who's playing. Because this is the bracket slide for Champions Night tomorrow here at the Super Series. Group 1, Jim McEwen, Matt Clark and Adam Mould. Group 2, oof, Scott Walters, <laughs> Raymond Smith, Alexander Merckx. Good luck picking that. Why is it always Group 2 that's the most interesting? No offence to Jim McEwen, Matt Clark and Adam Mould, but... Walters, Smith and Merckx, that is brilliant, isn't it? There's such a mix of talent in there from three different countries. We've got the local in Walters with all those 180s in the bank and we've got the finisher in Merckx and we've got the guru. Mm -hmm. That is the group that I'm salivating over. I can't wait for it. Indeed, that is tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Who thought that when we were stood up on this balcony on October the 22nd, suited and booted, it'd come back so quickly once again? Yeah. Saturday again. Well, we're already on Saturday, so let's get some sleep, but we can go to bed tonight thinking that it is Champions Day, and I'm just really intrigued to see who gets that big novelty check, hoisting it in the air, like Conan Whitehead did about three and a half months ago. It's been a great journey, but that journey is coming to an end. Indeed, one final session in Series 2, but it's the most important one because we are going to crown the Moda Super Series 2 champion tomorrow night from 10pm. Make sure you join us on Sporty Stuff TV in the UK and across the world via the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Australians watching tomorrow going into their Sunday morning. So do join us for that because we will be crowning the champion of Moda Super Series 2. Enjoy your Saturday. We'll see you here, 10 o'clock sharp. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>